Hello everybody and welcome to the Grand Finals for the Good Against Evil Tournament for BFME 2, the Rise of the Witch King between Sauron against Mr. Smog. Sauron was able to win the first best of 9 against Mr. Smog. That's why the bracket got resetted. And this best of 9 today is gonna decide who the champion is going to be and who the player is going to be who gets $100 cash prize. I hope you guys gonna enjoy your stays. If you do, please don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content like this. Before further ado, Let's get it started, shall we? At the bottom side of the map, we have the blue Engma player Sauron. And his opening at the top side of the map is the orange Dwarven player Mr. Smog in the game number one on the map for a while. It's a best of nine series, guys. Um, and who will be, you know, who will be able to win five games is gonna become the champion. But also gonna get the cash prize of 100 bucks. Which is not bad at all. Two males coming up for the Engma player. Into the Hall of the Kingsmen. On the other side, we see two mineshafts into the Hall of Warriors. That's the build order. That's the plan. You have my sword. <laughs> you are her pre precious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Raven, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. And oh my god, thank you for 1000 Bitty Bomb. 1000. Just like that. Just like that. Thank you so much for the huge spot. Means a lot to me. That's a lot of bits. That's, that's a lot of bits. I can't even count that much. Thank you so much. Two mineshafts, all of warriors, guys, into the pikeman's yard. Uh, first from Smoky. On the other side, two mills, three mills, actually. Round masters are on their way. And again, you know, they played this matchup on this map one time already in the last finals, a couple of days ago, in which Sauron was able to win. Because Sauron was doing a nice job scouting all these possible mineshafts and denying so much from the Dwarven player. So much. All right. Uh, hey, Raven. We are all doing fine. I, I hope also you are doing fine as well. Thank you for being here. We're gonna have Pikeman starts. Uh, the builder from Mr. Smoke is gonna build potentially a mineshaft around this side of the map in order to creep the straw layer right after. Dorbalata, welcome to the stream. Uh, on the other side, he's gonna get some guardians on the field next. And yeah, Sauron is gonna again scout the side lanes in order to, you know, be able to find those mineshafts from Mr. Smog and then take them down before Smoky can expand offensively, which is gonna be a bad thing for Engma. As Engma against dwarves, you wanna play a little bit more carefully early on. And if you can actually protect yourself against the first one, two pushes, you will be good to go. But I would love to see from Mr. Smog in this matchup, but we have not seen one, one time from him so far, our battle wagons. Nice timing, bad creeping here from Smokey by the way, he was losing many many pikemen, that's not the best, he should be using the builder for that potentially. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, the Gundabad warriors are gonna lose against the guardians, but on the bright side, however, they are much faster, so they can always choose to disengage. The mineshaft has to get demolished by Mr. Smog. The creep is getting secured by Mr. Smog, but the thing is, may shadow facts, thank you for the raid, appreciate that. Alright, let's see. Oh, that's gonna be close. Oh, 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 that's Fiesta. That's Fiesta. Come on, dude. That's so unlucky for Mr. Smog. He lost the creep last hit because that's the reason why his pikemen are not level 2. And he lost all the money as well, guys. And it's a horrible start as well. Lost a lot of time to creep this one. And at the end of the day, it was, you know, Sauron who was saying, Thank you for the leash, brother. Let me take the money. Let me take the creep. Let me take the game number one. Just like that. Smok is finally building the Forge Wars for a change. In, this is the first time in this matchup, by the way. He was no, never going for that one in the last Best of Nine series they played a couple of days ago. And now we have the legendary Wolf Riders and the Wolf Pack combination. We see them in every single game and I think we have to see them in every single game because they are so reliable. They are so strong. And what a great and fantastic start once again from Sauron in the, into the Best of Nine series in the game number one on the map sort of guys. Beautiful. Uh, 300 command points for Smoky against 450 command points for Sauron. Sauron once again is dominating this matchup so far. Dominating. Bilbo Baggins, welcome. Alright. Uh, Forgeworks is on the field and we're gonna finally see some battle wagons. That's not bad because they will be nice against the Gundabad warriors. And you can also, you know, choose them, choose to use them more offensively with the Man of Deal, for example, even though Man of Deal got nerfed big time. But also you can use them for sportive purposes and purchase the Benekeri upgrade on them, you know, to make your units around the battle wagons stronger. 
Nice commitment here against the Mineshaft. The Wolfpacks, you need to be careful though. There are some pikemen, but again, these are the best counter units to the pikemen. And Smokey is really, really, really behind. He's trying to go for that attack. That's the first time Smokey is being able to see the side of the Angma player Sauron, you know? And once again, Sauron is doing a fantastic job scouting every single pathway and denying Mr. Smoke so much. Demolisher? Maybe, yeah, Demolisher was actually OP, I agree with Mustafa here. Because Demolisher, we have seen this already one time in this matchup between Lukat against Sauron, and Demolisher was actually one-shotting everything, guys. You can trample down the trauma so you can one-shot them, and even Pikes are gonna die quite fast to your Demolisher when you trample them down. But again, you need to invest 600 resources for that, which is not cheap by all means. And ideally, you want to use this one, the Forge works more offensively, because walking down from this side of the map to this side with the Demolisher is going to take you ages. Only Lukat can macro Demolisher like a god, <laughs> but it was not enough to make him win the game. Smokey is going to creep the, um, not the work layer, the Goblin layer at the top right side to get some money. Oil battle was used, but the thing is, there are too many pikemen on the field and the, this battle wagon can't really approach them. But again, he's gonna give you leadership, which is always nice, because Engma, until he gets some sorcerers on the field or the Witch King himself, has no way of nullifying the enemy leadership. Or if Felvin is coming in clutch, nice one here from Sauron one more time. Sauron is just shining bright like a diamond in the first game against Mr. Smog and showing his dominance. Book champ, very well played here from Sauron, he's everywhere. He's attacking, scouting, defending at the very same time. Mineshaft is down, that's the most important Mineshaft smog just lost. Uh, he lost every single Mineshaft, by the way, he's down to 200 command points, and we know, that's the minimum. You can't have less than that one. Four power, point, four power points collected, barely any money, obviously no resource income because no Mineshafts. This is gonna be also taken down next. The Builder has to be careful, he's gonna bitten alive. He's trying to enter the Mineshaft, but he won't be able to do that. The GG might come very soon, smog is gonna fight until the end, hope for a disconnection problem from Sauron, potentially. Because let's be honest, that's the only way Smog can turn this game around. Rolling Call is being used on this little unit. That's all he got. And again, no builder, no mi no mine shafts, no farm, no resources. Nothing that can make him win this game. And a huge army from Engma play is ready to defend. Warden is gonna be used. He's getting outnumbered big time. Two guardians against the world. But those are not the guardians of the galaxy. That's not gonna be enough to defeat the forces of the evil. There is one more, by the way. He was using charge attack with these units. He will be able to kill the mill. He's just fighting until the very end, but the end might be closer than you guys think. Because Smog has no, not a single one, mineshaft. On the bright side, he can't lose any mineshaft because he has nothing on the field, you know. So, uh, Engma play will struggle to get the command, uh, power points he's looking for. That's the only unit Smog has left on the field, guys. That's it. The fortress is open. He has not even the money he needs to build a mineshaft right now. Look his money, guys. There is one builder. He's waiting. He's getting some money from the fortress over time. 25 every couple of seconds. So, he needs to wait a lot to be able to buy a mineshaft, which costs him 300 resources. The game is pretty much over. What a dominance. What a great and fantastic start into the game number one from Sauron as the Engma faction against Mr. Smog's Dwarves. On the bright side, however, next game is gonna be Dwarves, uh, I mean Engma against Elves, because Mr. Smog gets to play Engma in the next game. They build just a delay, not gonna deny, and there is nothing that can turn this game around anymore. And Smog has no units on the field anymore as he's losing everything, Smog is gonna be defeated. And what a fantastic start, once again, from Sauron, guys. At the bottom right side, we have the orange Engma player, Mr. Smog, playing now the evil part of the Good Ever Against Evil tournament. And his opponent at the top left side of the map is the blue Elven player, Sauron, who was playing really nice with the Engma faction in the last game against the Dwarven player, Mr. Smog. And today, in the second game, he's gonna build a barracks after the first Malon tree, or at the same time, pretty much. On the other side, we see two mills coming up for Mr. Smog into the potential Hall of the Kingsman. That means that Elven player is gonna get some units on the field much, much, much sooner than Mr. Smog. And again, he has the choice now if he wants to go for the Lorian Warriors and go for harassment, which might be a solid choice. But he can also recruit the Pikemen. He's gonna go for uh, with the Lorian Warriors and he's gonna send them forward instantly. 
But the thing is, by the time they're gonna need to walk from this side of the map down to this side of the map, I think Smog should be able to get a unit on the field. Gonna be close, but let's see if he can make it work. Alright. Rallying Cole has been chosen and Warchan has been chosen. Uh, both players, they don't have many more choices as Elves and Ingma. I mean, you have Falvin, which is always nice, but it's not the best ability to, to start the game with. That's why Warchan is gonna be, you know, 99% of all games chosen first from the spellbook of the Engma faction. Be quick. They hate each other, right? Yeah, they don't like each other very much, true Marek. <laughs> I mean, they are not enemies, but they are also not friends. Alright, Lorraine warriors are being sent forwards now. Gundabad warriors coming up for Mr. Smog, and that's what I was trying to say. By the time the Lorraine warriors needed to walk downstairs, the Gundabads are already on the field. They need to defend now, but in a one-on-one -on -one situation, I think Lorraine warriors, they should come ahead. Smog might lose one of the mills though. Maybe he can try to buy some time, but we have seen this many, many times. What happens around this side if he does that? Do you guys remember how many times he lost a builder like that in the beginning of the game? Many, many, many times. This time he's not cancelling the wall up, luckily, and I think the builder is gonna be in a safe spot. Um, Neftesia2207, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Alright, he might be able to keep this one actually protected without using his own war chance because the units are getting body blocked and they are actually forced to attack the wall up, as you can see. So nice wall up uh, placement here. That's close, he was almost able to save that, that would be actually huge. Saving the first mill against the buff Glory and Morius without using your own buff is always nice. And now it's Smog, who has the buff advantage. During all this time, uh, Sauron, the Elven player, was also able to creep the work layer at the left side of the river. So getting some more money, command point, I mean, money, experience points, and also power points from the spellbook. Now Smog has to make something happen. Very important. He has to now use the buff advantage he has over Sauron and try to take down at least one of the Malone trees he was building up. Potentially this one in the front side, because that's the first Malone tree the Elven player Sauron was building up. And he's now going for the civil guys to recruit some of the lancers, you know, which are not bad in this matchup. You have some mobile units. You can go for a trample against the extrovers. And abuse the fact that Smog has rights now on zero pikemen around this area. The extrovers are able to deal with this Lorian arch is no big deal. And there come, comes the Wolf Rider Battalion into the war chant. And no pikemen from Sauron. That might be Fiesta, by the way. That might be Fiesta. All crown stands very, very smart. This way, they're not gonna get one shot, as you can see. Even without the buff, they are not getting one shotted. They are almost dead though, and in order to save them, he needs to build a well now so they can regenerate over time. This Malone tree is going down and this one in the backside is going down as well. That's a huge attack from Mr. Smog. And he's trying to take his revenge from the first game. Remember he was losing the game really bad and really hard, but now in the game number 2, he's able to dominate this game so far. And also this Malone tree I'm assuming is gonna be taken down next. And with that being said, Sauron losing every single Malone tree around the fortress, just like that. Beautiful trampoline coming with the Lancers though, against the Extrovers. They are still buffed, but they are can't withstand the damage. They are also not use, uh, switching to the old ground stands, but even that I think wouldn't change too much because the Extrovers from the Trailmaster units have a really low uh, low armor, so they're gonna die regardless, I'm assuming. But this Wolf Riders, they were able to deal significant amount of damage to the economy from Sauron, and is this gonna be enough to snowball now the lead? Sauron is down to 300 command points only, while the Engma player has 350 command points collected. He has an army around this side, but the player who's gonna get the Rallying Call available first is gonna be definitely Sauron. He has not that many units on the field and no arches at all. And this is the power of the Wolf Packs, guys. They can take down the Spikeman in no time. With the upgrades, of course, which is the cold, heavy Spike Collars. During all this time, there is a Malone tree from Sauron, I like this, at the top right side. He's gonna get some money from this one, because I don't see Mr. Smog being able to scout this area any soon. He's trying to defend himself, the barracks is being the target, rallying call is available now. He's waiting for the second unit to arrive, before he's gonna use the rallying call. And Warchan is still on cooldown, but he has the power points he needs for the, uh, for the Felvins. He might go for the Felvin and try to kill this... Uh, oh, he's gonna use the Felvins there to disable the enemy units, okay. And the barracks is gonna be potentially taken down. Gonna be close. I, I think he can make it, right? Uh oh. Maybe not, maybe not. Maybe he can save it. Nice trampling coming with the wolf riders. I think the barracks is down, definitely. Because there are some more units coming from Mr. Smog. 
And losing the barracks means for Sauron he won't be able to get any more units from the barracks any soon. Yesterday's back on the menu boys, agreed and confirmed. Smog is doing a nice job in the game number 2 and he has to. After losing the first game, you need to win the second one. Because if you are being 2-0 behind in a series, it's not only gonna put enormous pressure on you, but also you will have to perform extremely well afterwards. That's why going even now in the game number 2 is very important. A frontal command points available for Engma and 350 command points available for the album player. Alright. Beautiful. I mean, I think Smokey is not expanding as much as he could, right? He is putting a lot of pressure, I like that. But I think he could be expanding a, li a little bit more. Just creep the work layer potentially around this side. This one is also for free to creep, so you get, you get some more money, you get some more power points, which is always nice. Because you have such a lead, but the problem is you are not expanding to increase the lead even further. Nice one, no pikemen, no problem. And Sauron has nothing left on the field anymore, guys. He has barely any units, as you can see. He has enough power points for the foresight or for the heal. But what's the matter if you have no units to heal? That's the problem. In the meantime, Smog was also able to creep the work layer around this side offensively. He has now 500 command points collected. Potentially gonna build another mill around this side. He can do that, of course. And what a fantastic performance. And Smog was doing a nice job actually using the buff advantage he had. The, un the unlikely situation for Sauron was definitely the case. I mean, the fact that he didn't have any pikemen to counter the wolf riders instantly. And the wolf rider timing from Mr. Smog was just on point, which was allowing him to snowball his leads big time. Power points are rising. Commitment against the stable. Can he take it down with the wolf packs? I'm assuming he might be able to do that. And the wolf packs are not dealing too much damage to buildings, unlike to units. Uh, trample is incoming, Sauron is trying to defend himself, but he is so behind now, I think it's gonna be difficult. Even though he has this Malon tree untouched, but you know, it's only one Malon tree, maybe expanding a bit more offensively is the way to go, because Smog keeps attacking from the same pathway, the same area of the map, over and over again. The stable is down to the wolf packs, guys. Um, that's, uh, you guys, know, he's gonna lose the lenses right after. Look at the command points from the album play, he has 7-0 now. He's gonna demolish everything, the game is over, GG well played. Two fast games in the best of 9 series, and the score, once again, is even. And once again, we have a similar situation for both the sides, pretty much, guys. Like, every time, the Engma player seems to win the matchup. Uh, the reason why we had uh, Sauron as the winner in the other best of 9 series was, he was able to win this matchup as elves against Engma one time which was breaking the tide and actually turning the series into his favor. And in order to win this one, either Mr. Smog or Sauron has to win against the Engma faction. You're gonna have the Mr. Smog now with the Engma faction building up two mills into Doll of the Kingsman. On the other side, once again, a early barracks coming up for Sauron, guys. Malon tree, the barracks. Building up now the second Malon tree right after. No bats, no fun. Uh, why do we have no bats? So let me open the bats in this case, uh, start prediction. And this is now the game number 3, game 3. Smog, Sauron. Now the bats are open guys, now you are able to bet on the outcome of the game. Right? Bats should be open now, if I'm not mistaken. Alright. Yeah, we're gonna have Hall of the Kingsman coming up for the Engma play after two mills. That's the build order. Also was the case last game in the map Sakura for S2. And this time actually the Alvin player is going for the Pikeman first. So he's not going for the Lorien Warriors unlike in the last game to go for harassment instantly. But he's choosing to creep the work layer first. And going for the Archers second. It's like a defensive start from, uh, from Sauron this time. Not that offensive unlike the last game. Let's see if he can make it work this time. With the same faction against the Engma player, Mr. Smog. He's gonna get this creep uncontested pretty much because Smog is moving uh, through the middle. I think he won't be able to see that in time. And Smog is actually starting with Extrovers first. No Gundabad Warriors, which is quite interesting. I think he wanted to recruit them to have something to defend. But uh, Sauron is mind, game mind gaming him quite hard and was able to secure the creep and also the money. 
Nice one. The extra overs are forced to disengage. And Rallying Call and Warchan are available for both the players. Sauron didn't choose anything just yet, but I think he's gonna go with the, with the Rallying Call anyway. On the other side, we're gonna have some more arches coming up soon for the Elven player. And it looks like you wanna go for the creep at the bottom left side. And I, I like this a lot. He actually does something uh, in the map, getting some money and getting some experience and also power points for free. And Smoke is not doing the same thing. Smoke is just gonna potentially move now to the first Warknair in the middle of the map at the right side. But, you know, if you don't know, the troll creep is always giving you more money, uh, in, you know, in compared to the work layer. Alright, the creep is going to be secured uncontested, and the Alvin player now will also get the chance to capture this in, which will allow him to recruit some peasants as a sportive unit. And this one can actually act like a second barracks. So you can, you know, recruit the units quite cheap, they cost only 150 each, so you can use them to actually go for harassment all the time. But he's not even doing that. He's not going for that just yet. Alright, so in the early games, in the early game, in the early couple of minutes so far in the game, nothing crazy is happening. It looks like the players are playing a little bit more defensively and focusing much more on the creeps, on the neutral creeps on the map instead of trying to go for harassment against each other. And Sauron is building a nice army. This one is going to be hard now to commit against because the Engma player has no wolf riders on the field. Ah, he has one of them, okay. A nice combination with the extroverse pikemen. More pikemen are coming up because Smok doesn't know what uh, the Elven player has, but he has some counter units already now. That's a nice blind, blind counter here from uh, Mr. Smok, definitely. So he has some units he can defend with against the lenses from Sauron, which is quite nice. And this man is going down for sure. There is no way. I think these units are not going to be there in time. But he's not demolishing that, which might be smart, because this way he can punish... Oh, never mind. They're actually in time. They are running away now for their lives. I think the wolf packs are faster, if I'm not mistaken. We shall see. It's, but they are not able to catch them in this kind of situations. And that's the first big attack coming now from Mr. Smog first. Rallying Call has been used defensively, by the way, on these units, guys. No, it's not. I, I, I'm blind. Rallying Call is going to be used. I, I saw them glowing, but it's the station behind, uh, behind, uh, behind the units, okay? Rallying Call is available. He's gonna use it defensively, of course. I think it's a bad idea now for Mr. Smog to take a fight around this side. Because they have double leadership, right? Because they have the leadership from the Stitcher and then the buff from the Rallying Call. Which is gonna make them... Oh, that's a nice catch, though. I like it. Very well done here from Mr. Smog. And now the commitment against the Stitcher and it's gonna be bursted down in a second. The build has to be careful, by the way. He's gonna get unsafe by building a wall up. But what a fantastic attack. Sauron was not in time and he was losing many many arches before the fight actually started. Which is very well done here from Mr. Smog. And look at this damage now he will be able to deal. The Malone tree is getting bursted down. What an unlucky timing with the archers. They are dying the second they are entering the battlefield. Switching them to the whole crown stance is gonna delay some time. But they are not making it out alive. And even if they can, they've taken so much damage already, you know. Varax is going down next. And I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. We ride from Rivendell. You need to ride to Rivendell, true. Ride to Rivendell, you need to have some sportive units around this side. There's still some units around. Will this be enough to defend the day? That's the question. We shall see. I mean, I like the idea behind this move here. He's gonna tr he's trying to go for a counter-attack. He's trying to deal some damage to the economy from Mr. Smog. But the thing is, he has not enough defense. He has no archers on the field. He can't commit against his army. There is no way. He's going for the heal, by the way, guys. But heal is only able to replace one dead man per battalion. And there are many, many dead mans per battalion. Enzi, welcome. you be welcome. Barking, hi. Alright, Builder. Builder from Mr. Smog. Is he paying attention? Uh oh, uh oh. Smokey with his builders, and he is not paying attention. All right, it's not very good. Uh, mistakes like this actually can turn the game around in a second. Trust me on that one. The meal is going down in the middle of the map. Smokey is not demolishing the buildings, by the way. I think he was waiting for the pikemen to arrive. Now he has some counter units to these lancers, and Sauron has to be careful. If he's not paying attention, he's gonna lose many, many of these lancers, but he's paying attention. 
The second Bad Axe is going down right after. And there's a second Bad Axe, he's losing. You have no power here. Uh-oh. No power here. Nice micro here from Sauron into the extroverse. I like that. Very well done. And that should be enough to force Mr. Smog to retreat, actually, guys. Not bad. Uh-oh. There comes the Orc Salmon. All right, I see you. He's going to be able to catch some of these Lancers as they are getting slowed down. That's a big Warchan incoming. The Alvin units, they will have double buff around this area. And they have also the sustain with the well. Valin Cole is back up now. He's going to use it instantly. He has to use it if he wants to be able to win this fight. And there are no pikemen. That means these Lancers can actually take down these Orcs in no time. Just like that, as you can see. What a... What a beautiful defense from Sauron, I need to say. And I think I kind of waste off the 10 power points from, uh, from uh, Mustafa, uh, not Mustafa, Mr. Smug, sorry. And he, has, he doesn't even have to Felvin now. That's really unfortunate. Not the best uh, move here with the Orc Summon. Definitely couldn't achieve too much. On the other side, we have now Voldo as the first hero. Not only in this game, but the in the entire series so far. That's the first time we see a hero in these three games we are able to cast. And the game is not over yet, guys. The game is not over yet. Even though Sau Sauron was, you know, really behind, he was forced to defend himself. But being able to buy some time with the Lancers, trying to kill some mills successfully. And actually even being able to kill one of the builders from Mr. Smug was very well done from Sauron. And that's one of the reasons why I never give up, never surrender is a great statement. Baldo has to be careful. I mean, the thing is, the Alvin player has not the power points he needs for the miss. So, Volder has leadership now on this extra overs and on the spike man. They're gonna be stronger. Trample is incoming. These lances are doing a nice job. And that's why I don't like this Orc Summon that much. And especially in a situation like this, he had no more pikemen around. Um, the Gundabad Orc Summon will just die in a second to the lances, you know? And look at this. He's harassing the map 24-7 with the Lancers, doing a nice job killing the mills left and right. That's why uh, Mr. Smog now, guys, is command points capped. He can't get any more units on the field until he gets some more mills. On the other side, Sauron was able to catch up with the command points. 460 command points against 475. Even though Smoky was leaving around this area, he was living here pretty much for the past 5 minutes. A nice recovery here from the Alvin player Sauron, definitely. And this game might go in, into the late game. We shall see. The troll layer is going to be the target from Mus uh, from Mr. Smog. He's going to be able to get this money as well. And maybe in those kind of situations, we need to make sure that Vold is getting the last. It would be nice, you know, to get him level 3 really fast. Because that's going to give you more money for every time you kill enemy units. Which is going to happen many, many times in this game. The Engma player can also now capture some, some Wildman of Dunland from this in at the top right side, or bottom right side rather. A commitment against the mill. And uh, this time, Smoky is on point by def with defense. But again, I like the movement here from Sauron a lot, because he's being active on the map. That's gonna buy him so much time. And he was building a another army now. Remember, he was losing many, many barracks. He lost two barracks in this game. But he is still somehow in the game. Engma army is now moving from, uh, through the top side with the leadership of Waldo. And here's one more little army around this side with the wolf packs and wolf riders. And there is a level 3 all of the Kingsman, guys. We don't see any snow trolls this game, but we're gonna see some dark ranges instead. What I would love to see also are definitely the hill trolls and snow trolls. I feel like they are very, very powerful. That's commitment from Mr. Smug. He's gonna lose a lot of these wolf packs. They are forced to retreat. But he's going for a sneaky attack now from this area. And he might also be able to commit against this barracks. And it looks like Sauron is not paying attention. He is not retreating in time. And this retreatment might be too late. Sauron, was he not defeated yet? The evil skills of no no B O U N D R Y S, he is the best for Messi of BFME. <laughs> Thank you for the 100 pity bomb. Sauron, was he not defeated yet? The evil skills of Mr. Smog known no boundaries. He's the best. He's the messy of BFME. <laughs> but Sauron is like, if he is the messy of BFME, I am the Cristiano Ronaldo from BFME. Thank you for the 100 pity bombs. And also, uh, YRKCM, thank you so much for the following. Welcome to the stream. Okay, guys. Uh, Alvin Play is not only back in the business, but he actually has a nice lead as well. 
The thing is, now he has to face against the Elite Archers, which has a great combo combo potential with the Felwyn, which is not even picked yet, just yet from Mr. Smog. So no Felwyn is available just yet. He might, he might also skip the Felwyn, but I feel like Felwyn is such a great power point ability from the Angma faction that you can use it in every single game, in every single situation. Voldo is, by the way, now level um, 4, but he's left alone, ladies and gentlemen, and Voldo against the world, the world is the winner. And that's a nice one here, look how many lancers he has, it's like watching Gondor Knights. I like that, very aggressive playstyle here from Sauron, but it, it, it works, guys, it works. And the problem now is gonna be, yes, he has to face against this Harad, um, not Harad, I'm sorry, Dark Rangers, guys, from the level 3 all of the Kingsman. The problem but for the Angma player, Mr. Smog, is that there are just too many lancers. And the pikemen here from the Trauma Master units are very vulnerable. They don't even have a porcupine formation, you know? That means he can kill them in no time with the archers, you know? And once they are dead, uh, the lancers, they can go for a beautiful trample into the backline and they're gonna take down everything in seconds. That's why maybe heal trolls is the way to go. I know you will now say, yeah, the heal trolls are not getting trampled down, but it's fine. Because as they're gonna charge through the units, they're gonna get slowed down. That's gonna buy you enough time with the heal trolls to take them down. Was going for the Felvin finally. He might be able to catch up a couple of these units, by the way. Imagine a beautiful Felvin here into the Pikeman. It would be the dream. But he's not going for that. I think you want to time the Felvin with the long shot of this Rangers. He was also purchasing, by the way, guys, the Benekiri upgrade. To give them the power spike they need. So now we're gonna see the easiest, but I think the most effective Bombo combo in this game. Which is the long shot and the Felvin. That's gonna deal massive damage to the enemy units. The thing is, they will have double buff around this area, and they won't die that fast. So what the Elven player will try to do is, he's gonna heal the second the long shot lands. Oh uh oh, the Rangers! That's the Wombo combo, ladies and gentlemen. Elvin Wood, Orc Summon, the Lancers are not in position, they need to retreat now. Haldir is leveling up, what a fiesta. Elvin Wood was used, by the way, the second they needed that. Because Elvin Wood replaces the Rallying Coal, that's gonna give you the buff you need in order to survive the burst. With the Alvin Wood and the stage on the backside, these Alvin units have 83% armor. That's why they are not dying that fast to this long shot. So what a great defense from Sauron once again. And he's actually doing a nice job. Even though he was behind pretty much the entire early game, but I think Mr. Smoke was kind of rushing it too much. He was not patient enough. He was not playing very smart. He was trying to finish off the game. He was trying to make Sauron call it GG. But Sauron said, no, it is not over until it's over, and I'm not gonna be defeated one more time from you. Two games in a row, that's not gonna happen, Mr. Smog. That's why we are now seeing a great Elven gameplay from Sauron. He's gonna commit now against the level 3 mill. He can go for the Snowbind, and that's gonna be also the case. You need to use Snowbind to save this level 3 buildings. That's very, very important. He was even using it a little bit too late, and the mill is now quite slow. That means Sauron can finish it off later on. The thing is, Mr. Smog has 650 command points, but the problem is 300 of these command points are coming only from these 3 mills. So losing them is gonna make you lose the game. Alright, uh, 650 command points available. We have now Morgomir on the field, guys. And I feel like he was not even reviving his Voldo, right? No, Voldo is still not revived. I think Voldo should be getting on the field, Tom, because he's level 4, level 5 is gonna unlock his summon healman ability, and he will be able to summon, you know, more reinforcements on the field, which is always nice. Morphy, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Smokey is trying to fight, but it's Elven play, Elven gameplay in the late game. Hydeer is gonna hit level 5 very, very soon, that's gonna unlock his leadership, level 8 is gonna unlock his golden arrow. Against a faction like Engma, with no fear resistant, it's gonna be very effective, alongside with a potential cloud break later on. And I think the MVPs in this game, guys, I think you need to agree with me, are these Revandal Lances from Sauron. They are doing such a nice work since the beginning of the game. Okay? Calvin is gonna be up very, very soon. The problem is, Smok has not that much money, and he has to definitely get some more ranges on the field. This is not gonna be enough. Against double buffed army, you will need at least four long shots to be effective. And they're gonna have double buff now from Haldir, so they don't even need to camp around this side anymore because they have now the leadership available around there. And Haldir, you know, also Voldo is back in the business, sorry for that, couldn't see him. Level 5 is gonna unlock his summon hillman, and also 
it's gonna make sure that you get money for killing every time uh, every time you kill enemy units you're gonna get some money as long as Waldo is nearby which is always nice and look at this performance with the Lancers, I like that. He's being everywhere, harassing all the time, unlike Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog is not able to do that, the same thing against uh, against the Alvin players out on with his own Wolf Riders. Maybe that's the reason why you would need some Snow Trolls, you know, Snow Trolls are nice. Felvin is being used now on the Lancers to catch them off guard. Into the Longshot, but Longshot is not a, that effective against Lancers, by the way. The mill level 3 is doing a nice job, also killing the enemy units, but he will be able to save both the battalions, which is very nice. And they're gonna respawn over time anyway. And he was using the Felvin for that, which is gonna have a cooldown, and that means it can be used around this area. And this area is looking very strong for the album player, guys. Yes, double, I mean, double buff, because this is like a rallying call. It's still active on the field. Morgomir has to get level 2. Level 2 is nice from Morgomir, because if you get Morgomir close to the enemy units, you're gonna debuff them. And this way, the long shot from the ranges is gonna deal more damage. But in order to do that, Morgomir hits, needs to hit level 2 first. However, Morgomir has no uh, debuff that can nullify the leadership, so it's not as effective as from the Witch King, from the Cave Pads, or from other uh, similar heroes that can do that, like Mouth of Sauron, for example, with the active debuff, you know? 12 power points almost collected for the Angma player, 800 command points available. He has a lot of units. On the other side, we have 13 power points collected for Sauron, guys. After Elvin Wood, Heal and Rallying Call, he has 905 command points available, that's a lot. And he has a level 2 barracks. We already know what it means. We're gonna see some more and more Mirkwoods later on. It's a bad commitment. It's a Oh, nice long shot, by the way. I like it. Look at this outpost. Sauron was able to build himself in the middle of the map. With a tower, well, in the backside. Statue in the backside. Also, Statue coming up in the front sides now. The build has to be careful, by the way. Uh, Vitao, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Level 5, Hydir. 3 levels away from getting the Golden Arrow unlocked. Morgomi is still only level 1 and we finally see some snow trolls as, as Snowbind was used to save this level 3 mil one more time. I think Witch King is gonna be needed. And Banana King better, my man. Thank you for 100 pity bombs one more time. <laughs> Damn, Shanks. Congratulations for reaching 705k subs on YouTube. You truly a new land and army worthy of Mordor. GG, nice thank you so much for your nice words, Banana King Beta. And also, Vito, thank you uh, for watching the videos on the YouTube channel. And thank you also for being here on the Twitch for the first time. I hope you're going to enjoy your stay. Giant Simon into the cloud break, guys. Wait a second. I'm going to follow up with the chat. I don't want to miss this Fiesta fight. The cloud break is going to stun every single unit. Again, no fear resistant for the Engma faction means they're going to not be able to move for multiple seconds, which can be deadly. And the Mountain Giant is very defensively against the Outpost only, but the Giants are running it down into the Pikemen and they're gonna be taken on in a second. Into the beautiful Trample with the Lancers in time. Holy Quacamole, this Sauron is shining bright like a diamond in this series so far. Big performance in the last game, but this game, he's popping off. He is popping off. Uh, Ziza, Zizi, Aa, Gaga. <laughs> Thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Thank you guys so much for being here. Appreciate that. It means a lot to me. One of the giants was able to survive, but the thing is, there is nothing to kill and the giant is a waste of power points now. 750 command points available for Mr. Smog. Yes, a lot of money. He might save for the Witch King potentially. Witch King is going to be very nice, by the way, even though he can still die quite fast against this mighty Alvin army. But being nearby to the enemy units with the Witch King once he's level 2 is the key to victory. Oh, oh the, okay, that was not the best one. Beautiful trample though into the... Rangers, I mean not Rangers, Mirkwoods, Orc Summon, that's the third time he's summoning the Orcs, but they are not very effective, nice one here for the Snow Trolls, I like that, Lancers are gonna take care of these Orcs the second they get spawned, and that's the weakness, level 5 now for Waldo, he means, that means he will be able now to summon some Pikemen, which is nice, uh, Turkushi, thank you so much for the, for the sub, appreciate that so much, thank you, means a lot to me, thanks for the spot. Alright, Haldir is level 6, guys. Level 8 is gonna be, again, such a, you know, you know kind of small cloud break, which is nice. We have seen this already one time before, the big cloud break. Stunning the enemy units against Angma is so effective. Morgomi is finally level 2, but in order to make the debuff active, he needs to step up to the units, which is easier said than done. Alright, the snow trolls are charging in, but they are running into the pikemen. Smog has to micro away, and he will lose one of these battalions, unfortunately. 
Level 2 is also purchased on these units and maybe Wild Summon is the way to go. I feel like instead of the Giants, he would be better to go with the Blight, you know? Because, but the problem is you, you can't go for the Blight with the Orc Summon. So he was forced to go for the Wild Summon first and then go for the Blight Summon right after. And then you use, the, the combo is pretty um, destructive if you think about it. You use Long Shot, Fell Wind and then the Blight at the same time. This way they will 100% die. And look at this army coordination now from Sauron. He's being grouped all the time. Imagine that combo right there, guys. Long shot, Delve Wind into the Blight. You will see a big army of the Whites just like that. Because, let's be honest, the Giant Summon was meh. You know, it was not very effective. And look at these lenses now from Sauron. He's on point with the micro of these lenses. Rallying Call is being used now offensively. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. Snowbind is available to save this level 3 mil one more time. In the, mean in the meantime, we have a fight here. And the thing is, he can use Rallying Call here because he has buff from the Elven Wood around this side anyway. Here, Resistance is also active, but it's not a big deal against Engma. Engma has no fear. Alright, Snowbind was used one more time. And the mill is quite low, but he was able to save this mill many, many times now with the Snowbind all alone. Beautiful trampoline coming in once again. This little pikeman from the Traumaster units are not able to deal with the mighty arches from the Elven player Sauron, guys. As high it is almost level 7, only one level away from getting the Cloud Break unlocked. 20 power points collected for Sauron, guys. Almost full command points. 1000 is max and he's really, really close for that. I did this level 7 now, killing ranges in seconds in the backline. And this lenses from Sauron are doing such a nice job. I think Blight is still the way to go, but again, he has to go for the Blight Summon. He has no way of going for the Blight now. Maybe he will try to save for the 25 instead after the Giants. Hildir is running for his life, he should be able to get away. Nice body block here with the lenses just in time. And Hildir will be able to survive. During all this time, you know, the, the problem is that the Elven player is pretty much untouched. And there comes the end mood, and there comes the siege weapon tribute, guys. The daddy of the forest, uh, not Sakura, Fangorn. Fangorn is the name of the forest, which he is the mighty hero of. Okay, uh, no heal throws all game long, by the way. I feel like heal throws would be nice. They are much, much tankier than those uh, plap spearman units with no porcupine formation. They have some snow throws here, and I feel like that's what Mr. Smog has to do. He has to now also go for harassment and try to fish some power points. He's finally playing around this area, but I think it's too late for that. Because now the siege is gonna begin and he has to go back anyway. Snowbind is on cooldown, that means the level 3 mill is gonna be potentially this time taken down. He's now moving from both the sides, he will be able to see this Malone Trace. The reason why the Elven player has full command points, look at, the <laughs> look at the placement of the Malone Trace, he has so many of them next to each other. And look how many units he has, he's cheating! He has more units than he's allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, they are recovering over time at the well, you know? And that's a massive Lancer army, guys. I feel like it's Helm's Deep and the Rohan ar forces are arriving, but that's the Elven army this time. The level 3 mil is the target, Snowbind is still on cooldown, can't be used. Look at the power points from the Elven player, 24, almost 25 power points collected. Cloud Break is almost back up, and with that being said, I think he should be able to defend himself. Long shot, Felvin combination is being used on the Smirk Woods, that should be able to kill them. Right? Almost. They have buff, of course, I think. Oh boy, that's the Sun Flare on your face. And now Smog lost the majority of his army. He has not that much left. Snowbind is going to be potentially up. That's going to delay, but not going to deny. What a fantastic and phenomenal performance here from the album players out on being behind in the first couple of minutes, but staying strong, staying patient, and actually turning the, turning the game around just like that. 21 power points collected, he's 4 power points away, but that wouldn't change too much, trust me on that one. He's trying to stall, Snowbind is now available, he can use it on the fortress if he wants to. He is going for the Trollstone Thrower expansions to defend himself against Tribute, and indeed he's taking way too much damage. Snowbind is now being used, I think he shouldn't use it just yet, because he could bait maybe Tribute, you know? But I can understand that he has to use it, because he doesn't want the fortress to get much more lower. Alright, uh, he also lost all the heroes, right? Yeah, he lost... No, he, his heroes were able to survive, so Waldo and Morgami are still alive, but that's pretty much it. He has not much more left than that one. Orc Summon is gonna be available soon again, but let's be honest, guys, I think Orc Summon had, like, little to zero impact in this game so far. 
And what a nice performance with the Lancers especially, they are the MVP of this game by far. They were able to stall so much time for the Alvin play and they are the reason why he is not defeated just yet. I like the playstyle here with the Lancers, they were doing such a nice work. Cloudbreak is available for the next fight? No, it's not available, okay. I was using it before, I couldn't see. And the siege will continue now. The whole of the le Kingsman level 3 is a target from Tribute. Uh, he's quite slow though, he has to be careful. Look at this range with the... Oh, 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 he was not... Oh, he was using the Bombard ability, alright. You can also use Bombard. That, that was the case, otherwise this would kill Tribute, by the way. Alright, um, Mr. Smog knows because the next matchup is gonna be once again Engma against Dwarves. And we have seen Smokey is struggling big time in this matchup. So that means losing now as Engma against Elves. With the matchup being Engma against Dwarves in the next game. It's not looking that great for Smokey, guys. Trust me on that one. Missed. Bombard, but it's not reaching the Tribute. The level 3 of the Kingsman is the target. One more hit now, and it's gonna be taken down. He has to commit against Tribute. And I know it sounds crazy, but it is so it is. The level 3 of the Kingsman has been taken down already. The commitment now, Orc Summon, but once again, look what's gonna happen the second they get summoned. Trample them to death, just like that, alright? There is nothing they can do and achieve. Nothing. 9.30 command points available, Glorfindel is level 5. And on the other side, we have almost 25 power points collected for Smokey. The Giants are almost back up as well. 25 power points collected now. He's gonna go for the Wolf Summon. And there comes the Wolf Summon! Beautiful! Holy guacamole! He killed every Lancer right there! Tribit is running for his life. Legendary show match! <laughs> He's flying to the next map! But he did actually zero damage to Tribute with the attack. That's kind of interesting. During all this time, the commitment against the level 3 mill. But a wolf summon damage into the Felwin. Very smart, by the way, from Mr. Smoke. He wanted to keep the units around the summon damage. Because Balrog summon... I mean, if you summon any big things in uh, in Rise of the Witch King, the summon is also dealing massive damage. This is a bad commitment, by the way. You can take down this. Oh, the giant combination. Maybe you can. But you need to deal with the pikeman now. Imagine the Orc Summon now, the Eagle is on his way, the Wolf, I don't know what he's trying to do, he's gonna eat one of the builders alive to regenerate his HP, that was fun, I like it, but is this gonna be enough to turn the game around? I don't think it will, because the Giants are down, guys, the Fortress is still a little bit under 50% HP mark, and Haldir is coming back, this Wolf is actually angry, he is looking for the Grandmother to eat her alive, will he find him? The problem is, he has not more, much more time left, and the fortress should be good to go. Imagine him being able to kill the fortress, you know, that would actually change a lot. He's gonna use this ability, and Haldir is also able to survive, he's level 8 now, Golden Arrow was used before, it's on cooldown, and I think Glorfindel in the meantime was murdering those snow trolls in no time, level 7, level 10 is gonna unlock the starlight, and he's only 3 levels away from that, he's a one-man army. Uh, Snowbind is gonna be used now, a, for, the, for the whole of the Kingsmen, that's bad. Oh, can he die? No, he can't. Uh, the problem is now, Snowbind is not going to be available for the Fortress, guys. And there comes the Giant Eagle from the Fortress from the Album Player. What a nice Wolf Summon, right? It was nice. It was Fiesta. I like it. That's what I'm expecting from Smokey. The commitment against the level 3, uh, level three mill. That's going to drop Smokey down to 250 command points only. There comes the Siege. There comes the End. There is uh, Glorfindel. Hydid is on the field. Also level 8. Now the siege will continue, the level 3 mill is gonna be taken down potentially, the eagle has to fly in safety. Morgomir and uh, Waldo. I see only Morgomir though. The mill is down. Alright, Warchan is being used. No pikemen around though, I mean not enough pikemen. Nice beautiful trample here into the into the rangers. I keep saying rangers, I mean midwood, sorry guys. Uh, and Smokey is down to 300 command points only. These are the two mills he has left on the field and what a game. What a turnaround. I mean, Smokey was almost able to do that. If he would kill this kill this pikeman before they kill the giants, he could be easily able to take down this fortress. Because giants, unlike ants, are also attacking quite fast. This is also down. Um, Smokey is just fighting until the very end. He has no much, not more money left. You know, if this would be Isengard, for example, you can potentially come back, you know? Because Isengard has devastation, has industry, has fuel to fires. So you have so much money generation, regeneration with the Isengard faction. Unlike with Engma, Engma has no way of boosting the money with the power points. 
And that's the reason why I think it's gonna be hard for him to come back now. He lost every single male which was high level 2 or higher. Now he has this only you know, level 1 males left on the field. The all of the Kingsman is very, very low as well. The Fortress is pretty much everything that is left on the field from Mr. Smog. There comes Morgomir. He was using the Morgul, corrupt, Morgul Blade against uh, Haldir, but he should be easily able to get away. And he is getting outnumbered, outspammed, out macroed with the lances, and they are still the MVP. Bold is back in the business. But what can he do against such a reckless saint? Elf Fortress? What? What killed the Elf Fortress? Excuse me? What? <laughs> and thanks for the Isengard's uh, tutorial. Helps you out. No problem. Uh, I'm happy that you was enjoying that one. What happened to the fortress, guys? And can someone explain me? How did he kill the fortress, though? I don't get it. He has no more builders le left, right? No, oh, he has no builders left. I don't see builders anymore. <laughs> Imagine! Imagine him losing this production buildings. This is all he got, right? Yeah. And he has no builder. If I'm not mistaken, I don't see a builder now from the album player, guys. Imagine! But the fortress is under attack. How open wise? He has snowbind. He can use snowbind once again. And uh, the tribute is gonna out. No, he is getting actually attacked from this uh, Thrallstone Trovers. And I can't believe that, but the game isn't over yet. He's gonna go for the White Summon. Might potentially use this now in order to deal with this ends. Elite Banner, thank you so much for the 100 BD bomb. Appreciate that. Didn't know this was in a flat 3R style drunk stream. Look at this fat end. <laughs> Look at this belly. But I, I missed that one. Sorry, guys, my bad. I couldn't even see what happened to the fortress. Really, my bad. If he can come... If, yeah, exactly. If he can come back from this situation and win this game, I mean, smoky, smoky. Maybe he can do it. Maybe he can do it. Uh, he has 450 command points only. That's the orc summon. Lancers are not in position to trample them down this time. And yeah, but the thing is, until he loses this production buildings, he's safe to go. And this is level 3. Smart move here from uh, Sauron to actually level them up to level 3. This way they're gonna become much much harder to be taken down, of course. The wolf uh, is still on cooldown, it's gonna be on cooldown for the next couple of minutes as well. Snowbind is available, but the problem is, he has barely any units around. He's trying to recover, trying to build some more Hall of the Kingsmen left and right. No, but he summoned the giants and the wolf at the same time. The giants died to the pikemen and the wolf was gone. And the fortress was still around 40% HP, you know? And I, that's why I was not showing that. The giants were gone. They couldn't kill the fortress. They died to the pikemen. That's why I'm actually surprised about how Sauron actually lost the fortress still. Alright, nice hit, no? No builders is bad, true. If he can survive, exactly. If he can survive, chat, until the next wolf summon is ready, I think he can turn this game around. You know, white summon is available. He might try to go now for the for the blight summon. He needs only nine power points for that, which can be nice. Blight can save the day. You know, you can use blight on the enemy units with the Felvin combination, kill the enemy units, use the white right after to kill the ants. So you should be good to go. The Tribute is just sieging now from multiple sides. Um, yeah, and Smoky is just defending himself. I mean, let's be honest, that's all he can do. No Builders, <laughs> no Fortress. What is going on? He has 23 power points, but he can't use them. Obelido, thank you so much for the follow. Ah, okay, my bad then. Maybe I missed that at the end, at the end uh, of the wolf. My bad, I didn't even see that. Sorry, my bad, guys. Sorry, sorry. Alright, there's an eagle. There are some ants with three beards. Elven units to keep this ants alive. Oh, the white summon there. The Felvin is being used as well. Three beard is running for his life. There comes the reinforcement summon from Voldo. 
uh, into the pikemen. The Vites are doing a nice job defending. Uh, the fortress is still safe. Snowbind is still available. And this game, as unbelievable as it sounds, is not over just yet. Smoke is still in the game. Trust me on that one, guys. Because with the Snowbind, you can delay so much. The Giant Summon is going to be up in about, what, 30 seconds, 1 minute, that's it. And then you can go for a potentially uh, summon because there is nothing to defend. No pikemen, no units. It's going to be hard to take down this level 3 barracks, but he can do that, definitely. And the thing is, if he loses the end mood, the barracks and the stable, the game is going to be over. Because he has no builders, he can't build the fortress. Look how much money he has, but what's the matter, you know? Tribute? Oh, he's going to be in safety now. The Trollstone Trollers are actually doing a nice job defending. Look his money. He has so much money. Unlike Mr. Smog, Mr. Smog has no money left, but Mr. Smog has a fortress. Now, this is a... Guys, welcome to the tutorial video in Rise of the Witch King. Money or the fortress? That's the question. The gi uh, this giant eagle can't really approach. The end has been taken down. And 3-bit is quite slow. He needs to recover over time. That's the commitment now with the war chant. The mid foods are very strong, guys. Uh, even though they are getting outnumbered. Plus 14 when you kill them because of Volder though. The trample is incoming. Tribit is raging. He is mad. You gotta run for your life. You have to run for your life. And yeah, I believe the Elven player is just trying desperately to get some more ants on the field to finish off this game. He knows that Wolf Summon is gonna be available soon. And hear me out. If the Engma player manages to stall until the Wolf Summon is ready. And he summons the Wolf and the Giants at the same time. Okay? Chad, he can do that. He can do that, he can finish off this game. And that would be one of the most Fiesta games in the history of Battle for Middle Earth games. Builder is alive, unlike the builders from, from Sauron. He has no builders, no fortress. He has so much money, but he can't use the money. Just upgrade every single building to level 3, I think that's the way to go. Also upgrade the stable to level 3 just to make it more tanky. Because level 3 has 6000 HP, level 2 for example has only 4500 HP. So your buildings are gonna be much more resistant, and it's gonna be harder for the opponent to take them down. Thirty command, uh, you know, thirty power points. Sorry, collected for Sauron, which he can't use. He can't use heal. He can't use rallying call. He can't use anything, and he won't be able to use any of these in the entire game. Smart move here with the eagle. I like it. He knows he has to kill the trollstone throwers in order to be able to finish off the fortress. Giant Summon is ready, Orc Summon is gonna be also at the same time ready as this Wolf Summon. So at pretty much the same time, he will get the chance to summon Orcs, Giants and the Wolf himself, guys. And once again, the Snowbind is available. I'm not too much worried about this building so far. He has to maybe expand a little bit and build like a sneaky Hall of the Kingsman around this side. Just in case, for the worst case scenario, that the Alvin player has to find this last building and that might be you that might be enough to buy you the time you need to kill these buildings he's waiting for it guys he is waiting for it he is keeping an eye on this uh powerpoint the wolf okay the ants are raging the trollstone throwers are dead he needs to rebuy them that's gonna cost him 450 snowbind has been used he's waiting for it more couple of more seconds is this gonna, gonna this is gonna be a time for the race this is actually insane it looks like the Elven player is ready to defend. He knows he has to defend himself. He knows he has to keep these four production buildings. These two barracks, the stable and the end mood alive. Orc summon defensively, I don't like this. I don't like this. I feel like you need everything now offensively if you want to be able to win. But he needs to get vision. He needs to get vision. He can't summon anything when he doesn't see anything. Maybe he doesn't even know that the Elven player has no fortress. I don't, who knows? I think he doesn't know. The wolf summon, there it is. To kill the enemy units. He is going ham. He is going... No, he needs to kill the, the buildings. Kill the buildings. Maybe he doesn't know, Chad. Maybe he doesn't know. He's gonna now use this one, the Devour. Which is gonna give him more damage and armor. Oh, he's committing against the Malone 3 level 3. I don't know about that. That's not gonna make you win the game. But maybe he doesn't know what we know. Maybe he doesn't see what we see. That's why he's not committing against the buildings. I think if he would know that, he would be committing against that one, right? Because with this one, the Calder Pack, you can maybe hit both the... You know, he doesn't see, but he will be able to see now. Let me check the vision control from Mr. Smog. Yeah, he doesn't see. And there comes the Giant Summon. There, This is the... How much damage it's going to be able to deal? Not that much. But the commitments now against the Barracks with the Giants. The Wolf is still on the field, but the Eagles are coming, guys. The Eagle is coming. The Eagle should be easily able to deal with these Giants. And they are... 
Look at how much damage he's able to deal. <laughs> the eagle is down, the barracks is down, the end mood is gonna be still remaining on the field. Does the end mood count as a production building? It has to, right? It has to, right? We're gonna see, we're gonna find out. I think he will be... Blight is gonna be ready now from Mr. Smog. He might use it now. The barracks is down, but the Elven play is still in the game. The end mood is counting as a production building, and it's not gonna go down this time. Very, very unlucky. If Smog would be using that offense... Uh oh oh <laughs> Guys! 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 One more! Oh my god! No way! No way! It's surviving! <laughs> <laughs> the white summon do everything but smog doesn't know maybe that's the problem you know maybe smog doesn't know in the meantime the fortress from smog is going down what is happening he's gonna use his uh, white summon defensively in order to deal with this end you have no power here. the eagle doing such a nice work I don't know what to say, guys. I don't know if Mr. Sm I think he doesn't know. He doesn't. He just doesn't know. He doesn't know if he would kill this end mood, he would be the winner. But once again, everything is on cooldown. Orc Summon was just used before defensively. Imagine him using the Orc Summon alongside with the Giants and everything else. He would be easily able to finish it off. Uh, Felvin is going to be used into the Blights now to defend against the Smirkwoods. They're going to run for their lives. Will they die? That's the question. We have some Blights now spawning from the Blight. And they are not dying. I mean, Smoke has barely any units remaining on the field, right? He has extra overs, but that's it. The giant eagle is going down, and he has no way of reviving him. Now the full commitment against the fortress. With even Hydea, who is now running for his life, the snowmind is going to be available once again, and the game is not over yet. The end mood is going to repair itself automatically over time. Look at this HP. This is what keeps Sauron alive. This is the reason why Sauron is not defeated just yet. Believe it or not, what a game. And I don't even know what happened to his builders. He lost them all. He has, look how much money he has. He has 11,000 resources collected, guys. 11,000! 42 power points collected. But he can't use either of these. He can't use the money. He can, I mean, he can use the money to make units, of course. But he can't use the money to buy the fortress. <laughs> What's happening? Snowbind was used. He's like, what's going on? Why am I not able to finish off this fortress? Smog doesn't know what's happening as well. We are getting some more ants. The little builder here from Sauron is trying his hardest to repair this ant mode as soon as possible. Orc summon is going to be available in, a, in about a minute. Can Smog do that? The thing is, you need to get vision if you want to summon anything, right? That means also, Smog has to get somewhere around this area in order to summon the orcs, take down this ant mode. But the problem is, Smog has barely any units around. You know, he has nothing that can get anywhere close to this side from um, Sauron. It's kind of cringe situation. I don't know what to say. <laughs> interesting, I gotta say. Interesting. Uh, Bobelido, thank you so much for the follow, by the way. And welcome to the stream. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Last march of the ends can begin. I mean, I can't tell you guys how much, uh, how many times Snowbind was able to save Mr. Smog this game. Smokey is just trying to survive, and if he can manage to survive, guys, I mean, it sounds crazy, but I think it's possible, right? If he can manage to survive until the next giant summon, which is gonna still take a lot of time, he can win this game. He can win this game. Because all it takes is like two hits from, from these two giants, and this end mood is gonna be gone. And he has no more eagles, remember? The eagle that he had, he lost them. And he has no more fortress, that means he can't even revive the eagle anymore. The siege is gonna continue, the fortress is really low, but he was able to get some Trollstone Throwers on the field once again. Can uh, Sauron finally take down the fortress from Mr. Smog? If Smog wants to win this matchup, win this game, he has to keep the fortress alive. That's his only win condition in this one. Only win condition. Look how much money he has. But what's the matter if you can't use it? Orc Summon is almost back up. Felwin is gonna be available, but I'm assuming he's gonna use them for defense, that's the summon healman ability from Volta, guys. I did this level 10, by the way. And again, losing the heroes. Oh, he was not able to catch Haldir with the Felwind. Losing the heroes is the worst thing that Sauron can do. He cannot revive his Haldir anymore if he loses him, right? He has no more fortress. And there comes the Orc summon. What is happening? Imagine, I don't know who's gonna win it, guys. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Do you think, do you believe that Smog can win this game? 
Do you believe that? I mean, Giant Summon I mean, is still on a cooldown, you know? I think that's gonna take him still up about 2 to 3 minutes. If he can survive until this point, maybe he can do it. Who knows? Who knows? In my mind, Sauron won this. It's just unbalanced. <laughs> Smoke already, already win? I don't know about that, man. Look at the Fortress HP. Does he have Snowbind? Yeah, yes. I'm yeah, he's not, he's safe, guys. He's safe. I can't believe that. I mean, that game is kind of interesting. Like, I don't know. I've never seen a game like this before. And I was able to see many, many games in Rise of the Witch King. Trust me on that one. David is running for his life. The army of the ants is coming. But Smog magically, randomly, somehow, manages to defend himself all the time. Look at the last march of the ants, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this four, five ants. One of them has been taken down. Four ants. The leader of the uh, of the forest, the tree beard, and his three best friends. Side by side. Haldir is running for his life. And once again, losing Haldir means you're gonna not be able to revive him any soon. Haldir is taking way too much damage. And Haldir is gonna survive. Oh, he's gonna be taking down 168 gold in the bank because of the pillage ability of all those passive. The ants are disengaging. Warshan is being used now on the units. And he can use that unlike... Sauron, look how much money he's able to get for killing this mid boots, guys. Engma player has 400 command points now. He is defending himself nicely, and in the worst case scenario, he has also his snowbind. He has to potentially use now. There comes the end army, and Sauron has left the game. Sauron just give up, just give up, and the game is over. Unbelievable. We have the orange dwarven player Mr. Smog at the right side, and the blue. Engma player Sauron at the left side of the map for Survivor, which is definitely, and you know, 100% the most played map in every single BFME related game. Not only the original games 1, 2, 3, but also uh, the mods, you know. Two mills are coming up for the Engma player, and uh, we have two mineshafts coming up for the Dwarven player. Smoky is struggling big time in this matchup, guys. He was not able to win Sauron one time in this matchup just yet, not in the first best of nine series, and also. So far, not in the best of 9 series of today. So he has to win at least one time if he wants to become the champion. Very important. And once again, the winner of this series is not going to become only the champion. But also, the winner of this, champ the winner of this uh, tournament is going to get 100 bucks as a cash prize. While the loser, either one of these two players, is going to get 50. Alright, two males hold off the Kingsman into the third mill coming up for Engma. On the other side, we see, first of all, Pikeman start. Alright. He might go for the creep at the bottom right side. And I think Smokey has to rethink his strategy in this matchup, alright? Because he was trying the same thing over and over and over again. You know. And it was not working out very nice. Pikeman start. He's gonna creep this one. Normally, the Dwarven player, he likes to creep this troll layer, you know? But I think in this case, you want to creep this work layer, which is much faster and much, much easier as well. Pikemen are getting inside this mineshaft, and they are going to get out from this one. Might still go for the uh, troll creep, but look, Sauron, he's already scouting this area because he can read Mr. Smog like a book. That's why mind games are very important in this one. Now, Smog, uh, Sauron was able to outplay Mr. Smog many, many times in this matchup, but this time he won't be there in time, and this creep is going to be secured by Mr. Smog this time, which is quite nice. And there is the second builder. He might go for the troll creep right after though. That's gonna be free money, free experience. These units are gonna hit level 2 after this one. And Warchan has been used offensively. The mineshaft has to get demolished in time. Maybe you can try to focus down the Trollmaster. But he should be able to get away. Now Warchan is on cooldown. That means Smoky has now his buff advantage. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, I feel like... Uh, they shouldn't fight, but they are level 2, it, and it feels like they are winning this big time. They're actually one-shotting those Kundabad warriors in no time. Very well done here from Smoky. And once again, Smoky has the buff advantage, guys. I don't see his second builder, though. His second builder is around this side at the top right corner, and he's hiding for some reason. There is an offensive mill coming up for Sauron to scout this area, which is quite nice. Look how much vision control he is gaining because of this mill. On the other side, we have a fight here. Rylan is going to be used for the first time from, from uh, Smoky. And the Warchan is still on cooldown. This Kundabad warriors are still buffed. They're gonna now commit against this mineshaft and they should be able to take it down. There is one more at the bottom left side. And Smokey is now leading forward, guys. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. Remember, no buff is gonna be available for uh, Sauron to defend such an attack. 
Now is the time for Mr. Smog to shine. Now is the time for him to deal the damage he's looking for. Oh, 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 oh. But he's paying attention. Imagine him losing the troll, uh, the builder to the troll. It would be the worst case. Nice body blocking here. I like it. The wolf packs are diving in. Once again, they are a great counter unit. Especially with this. This is a huge upgrade, by the way. That's going to make them so tanky. And they are buffed this spike man. Still, they are dealing so much damage to the spike man. This is actually kind of kind of insane, if you ask me. There is not a single unit in the game, including the heroes, by the way, that can kill the buffed pikemen as fast as this wolfpacks can. That's kind of crazy damage they're able to deal. And look how, how easily he was able to defend himself as well. Just with the combination of the wolfpacks and the wolf riders. Very well done. And I feel like they have to get nerfed. That's my personal opinion, though. But so far, they were dominating every single game. And they are also the highest win condition as Engma against Dwarves. They are so good, so reliable, and also so cost efficient. They cost what? How many? How much resources they cost? 250 each. They are not even expensive, you know? Engma players once again having the lead in this matchup. He was able to defend himself. He was able to keep the mills alive and protect it. And during all this time, he was also able to scout every single mineshaft around the bottom side and try to take them down one by one. And look how well he is scouting the map. That's crazy how Sauron is playing this matchup. And he's, you know, once again, reading Mr. Smog like a book. He's being everywhere, dominating the fights left and right, and actually snowballing his lead to victory. This matchup was never close, and it was always one-sided. It was a couple of days ago the, the case in, at Sunday, uh, but also today. And once again, in order to win this series, win this best of nine, Smog has at least to win one time this matchup and also every single time when he's playing Engma against Elves. It's a bad way to creep, he's gonna lose a couple of these Guardians. And uh, not the best uh, positioning here with this Pikeman and the Guardians. The Wolfpacks are diving in, once again they're gonna try to kill this Pikeman in no time. Gundabad Warriors are following up. And the commitment now potentially against the Gundabad uh, against the Pikeman with the Wolfpacks and against the Guardians with the, with the Gundabad Warriors. During all this time, there is a counter attack now with two battalions of Gundabad Warriors. The commitment against the Mineshaft is gonna be enough to burst it down. The Guardians are coming out, but that's not gonna change anything. The Mineshaft is gonna be definitely going down. And once again, take a look into the minimap. As dwarves against any, any matchup, against any faction, pretty much in Rise of the Witch King, you need to make sure that you expand offensively. There is one Mineshaft all alone at the bottom left side, but that's it. All the Mineshafts, all the other Mineshafts are being built defensively. And the first time Smokey was able to kind of stall the game out was on the map Cap of Rohan at Sunday, last Sunday, when he was starting with the extra verse from the Archer Rage. Maybe that's the way you want to play this matchup. Maybe you need to play more defensively and not play the classical Dwarven gameplay, which relies heavily on being offensively active 24 7. You know? But maybe I'm wrong. Uh, when I was talking to Sauron, because Sauron lost this matchup many, many times against uh, Mr. Smog in the quarterfinals. Sauron losing the quarterfinals against Mr. Smog in the best of 9 4 1, actually. But now all of a sudden he starts dominating this matchup big time. I was asking how it comes, and he said to me that he was training again, uh, with Solas the same matchup. And now he's just copying his build order. That's what uh, Sauron told me. Heal is being used now to keep this one alive. But the Felvin is coming in clutch to suck in the battle wagon. The game is freezing. The lag is real. And the battle wagon actually survives this one. That's interesting. All right. Look at this HP. Now these units have leadership, guys. And they have double buff with the rallying call. Oh, oh run for your life. Not even close, baby. This guy's cruising with the battle wagon. He has to turn them into the spearman. That's gonna be also the case. He's trying to be close, but the Hall of the Kingsman is going down. Beautiful trampoline coming, but the battle battle wagon is not gonna make it out alive. But still, decent amount of damage dealt to Sauron's definitely. He was able to kill the Hall of the Kingsman. He was able to kill more, many more units. And that's the first time. That's the first time today. And that's the first time since Sunday that Mr. Smog is being able to go for a successful attack against Sauron. Killing his starting mill, killing one of the all of the Kingsmen, and actually killing a bunch of units on top of that as well. Very well done, but is this gonna be enough to snowball the lead to victory? This is the question. War chant is gonna be available sooner for the Engma player than the rallying call for the Dwarven player. Uh, Ahayix, thank you so much for the follow. And also, 
Cardi22, thank you also so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. Now the Guardian say they're gonna be able to take down this mill in no time. That's why Sauron knows that he needs to demolish that one in order to deny the power points our, um, you know, Mrs. Mock is looking to get. Which might be invested into something like a, like a Hobbit Summon once he has, you know, 10 power points collected. He can also go for Revealed if he needs that to save this mill, I mean Mineshaft, sorry. This is only Mineshaft level 2 he has remaining on the field. This is under control from Engma. He might look to get some healmen if he wants to. The builder has to be careful from Smoky. And he will be also losing those guardians around this side. So Smoky is still in the game, but I would still say, even after a successful attack like before, Sauron has still the upper hand in this matchup. He has still the upper hand. And once again, the Warchan is almost back up. He can also go for the Snowbind in the worst case scenario. Then comes the Battle Wagon. Oil Bottle is gonna be used. It's gonna cause the enemy units to take damage over time from the burn effect on the ground. But the mineshaft is going down regardless. Engma play is expanding during all this time. He was able to rebuild the one Hall of the Kingsman he lost before. So he will be able now to keep up with the spam. And one look in the minimap can also tell you that Sauron is just everywhere. He's expanding, he's scouting, he's his micro is quite his macro is quite insane in this matchup against Wars from Mr. Smug. And that's his highest win condition. Because this series feels like every time we see Engma, Engma is winner, you know. If Mr. Smog is playing Engma against Elves, he wins. If Sauron plays Engma against Dwarves, he wins. So one of them, one of the players has to make sure to win this unfavorable matchup they used to lose every single time. If they want to become the champion, because that's going to give them a huge lead. Like for example last game, if Sauron would be able to win the last game, it was really close as you could tell. As Elves against uh, the Engma player Mr. Smog, this would give Sauron such a big advantage, trust me on that one. And this wolf pack swoops everywhere pretty much. Calvin was used, the battle wagon was able to get sniped down here, and that's very unfortunate for Smoky. Boulder is shining bright like a diamond. He's now level 3 already, guys. He's leveling up very fast because he's able to share experience since he's, you know, close to the allied units around him. Level 5 is gonna be a nice power spike for the Engma hero. During all this time, uh, more battle wagons need to be recruited, but once again, they are quite efficient, true, but they're also very expensive. Getting them on the field costs you 500, buying the upgrade costs you additionally 300 more. That means losing a battle wagon is going to make you lose 800 resources, just like that. He's going for the Benekiri upgrades now, which is nice, because that's going to give those Guardians a nice power spike since they're going to unlock the charge attack, which is going to be a replacement for the Rallying Call. Huge Engma army at the bottom side of the map with Wolf Riders, Wolf Packs, and once again, these units are so reliable. They are cost efficient, strong, mobile, all the good stuff you need to win the game against dwarves. Alright, uh, Smokey doesn't want to give up this area, he's getting out, killing a couple of units, nice one. Rallying Call is on cooldown, Warchan is on cooldown, but for the next attack, or for the defense in this case, we're gonna have to White Summon from the Engma player Sauron for defense. And White Summon is so nice against dwarves, why you asking? Glad you asking, because once again the weakness of the dwarven units is their lack of mobility, they are very slow units. You can't run away from the Swites, by all means. They're gonna just stay there and fight you until the end. They're gonna take you down, just like that, you know? During all this time... Uh oh Battle Wagon is getting caught by these wolf packs. There are too many of them. Oil Bottle is being used for defense. They are burning, they are taking damage over time. It feels like Battle Wagon is a bit more resistant to these wolf packs. They're gonna need more time to take him down. But he's getting outrun. Battle Wagon is slower than these uh, wolf packs. That's why he might still lose him. Heal is on cooldown, or he didn't even pick... Uh, he was going for the heal, but Battle Wagon is just dying. Because he's getting... Oh, nice undermine here. Do I gotta... I, I, like, I like this one. Very well done here. But it is, an, is it enough to defend this attack? That's the big question. The game is freezing now. I hope we are not lagging out. But if anything goes wrong, if it's Mr. Smoke who's disconnecting, I gotta give the win to Sauron, because... Sauron has such a massive advantage now. Look how, how the command points from Mr. Smoke are looking like. 60 command points from possible 575, 675, but he has 500 command points under his control. Uh, okay, the game continues now. Is it me though? Is it me? Because they are saying, not me, not me. But it's not me either. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> It's not me. He's saying play if Shanks DC. That's a good plan. Don't leave in the, at this stage of the game if I DC. Very important to keep playing, but it's not me. I am not this DCing. But this game is over anyway. I don't feel like 
that uh, Mr. Smog can turn this around. He has barely any units remaining on the field. The Whites were able to kill the majority of his army. That's why White Summon was very successful and very nice from Sauron. And this is the only unit he has left. The Guardians here. He was buying Benakiri upgrade on them. But that's it. He's okay, finally going on. Some random stuff is happening for sure. I think someone is either pressing F12, which is gonna make like a print of your current screen. That's gonna cause the game to lag, but or someone has really big connection problems. Uh, I, it's not me. Game range, it isn't me either. <laughs> Alright. Smoky is behind. This is over. Like, there is no way. Should I just leave this game and hope... Who's gonna get the host when I leave? Smoky is gonna get the host. I'm gonna just leave this one. There is no reason of me staying here. And this game is over anyway, right? Sauron was able to win this one, yeah. We're gonna have a best of 9 series. We're gonna have a best of 9 series, so we have at least 3 more games to go. And what happens after, we will see. Mr. Crab, Mr. bye! Crab Thank you so much for the primers! Months. Now for 2 months in a row, there we go. Thanks for the spot, thanks for the sub, appreciate that. Alright guys, we are now on the map RA2. Uh, we have seen this already a couple of times in this tournament. What a change, it's a new map. You know, replacing the map Westfall actually in this one. Westfall doesn't exist in the map pool now for the good against evil tournament. We have the blue Angmar player Sauron against the orange. Warven player Mr. Smog who was kinda struggling in this matchup big time. And I feel like Smoky has to maybe go with the extra overs. Because let's be honest, I think that's the first time in many many games we have seen between these two players since Sunday. In which Mr. Smog was able to survive 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise this matchup... The, you know, from the performance of both the players, seems to be extremely one-sided. And this seems to not be working against Sauron, who is scouting every single pathway. Maybe on the map like Jungles of Farharad, he can make it work, because it's very big, it's hard for Sauron to be everywhere. But on maps like this one, I think it's gonna be tough, but we shall see. Nice placement of the mansion, I like this one. Right in front of this uh, stone. This way it's gonna be hard for Sauron to go around this and attack this from behind. And once again, you know, dwarves, they heavily rely on expanding. They have to expand because once again, they are quite slow units. They are not made for marathons, you know, they can't vault that far. They can, but they're gonna need ages. The orcs uh, are coming here, but the guardians, the guardians, they should be able to defend. He's trying to get inside the jeans, and he will be able to get inside the jeans, and actually that's favoring now the Engma player, look at this. Now it's hard for the Dwarven player to attack this Underwet Warriors. Oh, the Trauma Master to be careful though, nice wall up there, I like it. He's going around and actually abusing the fact that those Guardians are just very slow units. They can't follow up in time, and what a nice micro here from Sauron one more time. Killing the Mineshaft, undamaged pretty much. Wolf Riders are coming, Wolf Riders are nice, Wolf Packs are even better in this matchup. We have seen them dominating this fight for Sauron big time. That's the first attack, but the mineshaft has been taken down. The wall up has to get cancelled, and that's gonna be also the case. Warchan is still available for the Angmar player, and I'm assuming he's waiting now for the Wolf Packs. Because he was killing this mineshaft without the use of his Warchan, which is impressive by the way. The builder is building a wall up, that's a nice thing to, you know, kinda stop the enemy unit movement. Bats, 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 bats. The bats are open. The bats were already open for this one. Many, 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 many minutes ago. Remember, we were waiting in the lobby. The bats are still open. We have already batted, potentially, the outcome of this game. The wolf packs are fighting, always purchasing the spiked collar armor, right? No, they, they didn't. And if they don't do this, I think they're gonna die quite fast. But what a nice defense here from the Engma player once again. In the meantime, the Skundabat warriors are just scouting the area, left and right. They are being everywhere. The builder is scouting the right side and building a mill right in the middle. That's gonna give him the vision control he needs to see the enemy builders, to see the enemy mineshafts. And once again, Smoky is struggling, ladies and gentlemen. He's going actually now for the archer range, now switching a little bit, which is necessary. We have seen this is not working very well. <clears throat> so if you are trying to do the same thing over and over again and try to have some different outcomes, it's kind of the definition of being insane. So Smokey has to realize, okay, what I'm doing is just simply not working. I have to do something different. You have my sword. And Wi-Fi 98, thank you so much for the following. Welcome to the stream. This mineshaft is going down for sure. 
extra overs, they should be able to finish this off. Nice one. And the Wolf Riders, nice micro, but also I think the macro is very on point here from Sauron. Being active in the entire map every single second is very impressive. I like that. Net Jukes, thank you so much for the follow as well. Um, 450 command points for Engma, 354 dwarves. And just take a look into the minimap. There are no mine shafts anywhere close to the Engma player. And this way, this is the way you can shut down the dwarven gameplay completely. No? No creep, no win. Yeah, I mean, he's not creeping, he's not getting any money, he's losing units, he was losing this one. For 50 command points now and 400 command points. I mean, Smok is not defeated just yet. Like, yes, still some units. Look at this. The mill has been taken down. Maybe he can still turn this game kind of around. But I feel like in the late game, it's going to become even harder for the Dwarven player to deal with this. Uh, Dark Rangers, you know, Hill Trolls. They have so many strong units slash heroes. But yeah, I would like to see a late game stage in this matchup. Every time we have seen this matchup. <laughs> Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. The mind shaft is down, just like that. Uh, Alexon, thank you so much for the follow. Alexon1, appreciate that. This mind shaft is going down as well. And I think Smokey is just kind of playing very aggressively. But so far, Sauron was able to defend himself every single time. The combination of the wolf packs, extrovers, is just very strong. You know, we have some front line now with the Gundabad Warriors. And look at this Drown Masters. He has double half the Kingsman, so he can get many, many units on the field pretty much instantly. And he will now all of a sudden have like six battalions of units for defense, and that's gonna be enough to defend, I'm assuming. And just to make sure he's even retreating, now he can go for a war chant. And then just use this mobile units like wolf packs, maybe. That comes the Felvent. Was it even necessary? That's the question. Heavy spike colors purchase to make them tank here. Look at the front line of this wolf packs. They are not even dying that fast, even against this guardians and extrovers. And during all this time, the extrovers here from the Engma player Sauron are just dom dominating this fight for the Engma player, big time. Nice lineup, aggressive stance to maximize the DPS, and as easy as that, easy, lemon squeezy. 500 command points for Engma, 475 for dwarves, but Smokey keeps losing stuff 24/7, 20. Or seven. What are those wolf packs weak against? I don't even know. I feel like they are so tanky also, you know? They don't even die that fast to extrovert slash uh, guardians. You know, normally those kind of units, like spiderings for example, they are very vulnerable against like archers for example, right? They die quite fast. But these wolf packs on the other side, they seem to be much more resistant against everything pretty much, right? That's a massive counter attack right there. And the mine shot is getting demolished in time. Look to commitment. He can even commit if he wants to, but that's gonna be risky to commit against the fortress, I'm assuming, right? Because you are playing against dwarves, you can always go for the rebuild, even though he doesn't have the power points he needs. But it's a waste of time anyway. It's hard for you early on to kill the fortress like that. Nice trample. And I can't believe that. Like, this combination is so deadly. Wolf packs for dealing with the pikemen, the wolf riders for dealing with the guardians. Easy peasy. This is a massive Engma army, guys. Uh, 325 command points only now for dwarves. Against 575 for Engma. Oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what's going on. What's going on wrong for Mr. Smog. Maybe he should be playing a little bit more defensively. I can't tell. Maybe go for Man of Steel. I mean, maybe try that out, you know, Man of Steel, maybe that's the way to go with the, against the wolf packs and wolf riders, and then you protect them with the pikemen, if the wolf packs are arriving, you can kill them with the Man of Steel, and you have your pikemen as protection for your Man of Steel. Man of Steel units we don't, we barely see in this matchup, or generally from the dwarves, they are pretty much finishing the games without them, but I feel like the, you know, they can also deal a lot of damage. Especially with the man of uh, with the uh, Benakiri upgrade from the battle wagon with the additional leadership damage boost. I mean that's pretty much GG, right? There is no way Smokey can turn this game around. He's going for another mine shaft here. 
but this mineshaft is going down. He's getting out macroed big time, but he's also getting out spammed big time. Like having this many more units on the field than your opponent is gonna allow you to split your army like he does and attack from multiple sides at once. In this kind of situation, Sauron doesn't even take. Oh, the builder oh, from Smoky! Oh, he's getting in safety just in time. The mineshaft has been taken down. Look at these wolf packs, they are eating those pikemen alive. Just like that. One shotting them pretty much. And those are expensive pikemen as well. They are not very weak, you know, unlike the pikemen, for example, from the Emma faction. Okay, I don't know what Smoke is trying to do. He always leaves this area completely unguarded. Like you will need some defense because otherwise you're gonna lose now your mineshaft level two. For free, there are no units inside the mineshaft. There is little to zero protection in this area. And this is going down. Does he have rebuild though? He has, so he's gonna definitely use it to save the day. He's waiting and waiting. That's something we can always do with the rebuild. Because you know it's a level three, a level two mineshaft. He's gonna try to kill. He's still committing, by the way, uh, and he's gonna retreat now. He knows, okay, I can't take it down, and even if I can, I'm gonna lose many, many units for that. There is no reason of taking the risk. He was beating off the rallying call and beating off the rebuild as well, so it's a win-win situation anyway. And in the meantime, uh, once again, Smokey is getting out, spammed out of the map. He can't expand, and that's the worst thing that can happen to you when you are playing dwarves. If you are the one who has to defend yourself all the all the time, it's so difficult, you know. Orc summon, no battle wagons, the snow trolls are coming in clutch as well, Smokey has barely any units around, he has some units inside the mineshaft but is this gonna be enough, that's the question, the wolf packs once again are taking care of the spikemen, no big deal, that's a massive army but even more are coming guys, look at this left side, look at this side, look at the top side, there are units everywhere from Sauron and he's just spamming Smokey out of the map Erech 2, just like that. Elvin is being used, gets in there, into the trample with the snow trolls. That's one of the fastest games we have seen so far. And the score is gonna be in the favor of Sauron one more time. Now we are on the map, Erinne added. Sauron has an advantage now. If he can win this matchup, it's gonna be a huge lead for him because the upcoming game is going to be once again uh, the matchup which is gonna favor Sauron, guys. We have the blue. Elven player Sauron against the orange Engma player Mr. Smok in the game number 6. Two males are coming up for Engma and a early barracks is coming up once again for Sauron. Every time in this matchup so far he was always building the barracks alongside with the first Malone tree. Every single time. And one of them, in one of them he was going for the Lorraine warriors first for the harassment. In the other one he was going for the pikemen for early creep. And this might be one of these uh, creeping things once again. Because let's be honest, the Lorian Warrior start was not very successful because by the time you reach the other side of the map, most of the time your opponent has already some units on the field for defense. Okay, this is a nice start, I like this one, that's gonna give you the money you need. You can also go for a creep offensively, potentially to this one, but this is also very risky, you know. This is gonna be free, this is not gonna be contested, so you're gonna get it done very very easily. And what you can do after this one is Lorian Warriors. So he can creep this one, get a level 2 pikeman, group them right after with the Lorian warriors and go for attack, but he's choosing to go more for a de defensive choice. In this case the Lorian archers. To have some defense against the potential attack uh, with the Gundabad warriors from Mr. Smog, who is now building the mill number 4 in the front side. Yeah, Erin Le Edit is the smallest map, definitely, in this uh, tournament. And we have still many many ma maps to go as well as the jungles of Farharat, for example, which can be potentially a nice map for dwarves against Engma for Mr. Smog. Creep is uncontested. During all this time also Smoky is creeping the creep with the Gundabad warriors. He should be able to do that as well without without any contestion from uh, Sauron. I think Sauron can now move even to the troll layer at the bottom right side. And I think that's the plan, because look at the builder. He's gonna use the builder to lure the troll away, and the creep is gonna be secured quite easily. Okay, nice one. I like it. That's the way you want to creep. This way you don't take any damage in return. And easy peasy, just like that. Two creeps against one, and once again the troll layer is giving you more money, so Sauron is gonna come ahead. But remember, Sauron was going for the early barracks, while Smokey was starting with two mills, so... He was getting a bit more money early on. There comes the wolf then. 
for the Wolf Riders slash Wolf Packs. The creep is gonna be definitely secured by the album player. Looks like, uh, looks like Smokey is trying to steal, but very smart move here with is from Sauron. He doesn't want to even risk the biscuit. Look, Trauma <laughs> Smokey was trying hard, but he won't be able to reach. That's the beautiful part about the Trauma Master units. They're gonna respawn over time. Just send them back to your own side, and you should be good to go. Okay, uh, the bottom side of the map, the right side of the map is cleared. There are no more creeps left. We have still the work layers around the top left side here, but also in the middle, as well as the troll layer remaining on the map. That's it. Uh, the stable is up on the fields now for the Lancers, and yeah, they were doing a nice job in the game in which Sauron was almost to, able to win, but then he lost the game because he has no builders. Imagine losing a game when you have 45 power points collected, you have over 10,000 resources, but you can't use them because you have no builder and you have no fortress. Uh, Rallying Call is available, Warchant is available, 400 command points are available for Engma, 400 command points are available for Elves. In this game, uh, Sauron is playing a little bit more carefully, smart, let's see if he can make it work. Because one mistake in a map like this can actually mean a lot. Like for example, if the Engma player loses everything around this side, because the, because the travel between these two sides is quite fast, you know, you can be on the opposite side of the map in like seconds. Right, be careful here with the wolf riders. He was capturing the signal fire now running for his life. He should be able to get away. You have my sword. Ali Ali Ganji, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. Okay. No standing around. Nice sneaky attack. But you know, Sauron has already some uh, leadership, arches on the field, and also lances are coming. Oh oh, bad trample, bad trample, bad trample. He lost a lot of Lancers for no reason. He has no wells still, right? No, no well, but he's gonna build it right now. But still a great defense after all. Now this was a nice trample with the Lancers just in time. And this Malone tree is gonna be protected for now. Um, and I like this, because this map is small, which means defending yourself early on is kinda easy, you know? And uh, the distance between these buildings is also very tiny. So you can actually be uh, also, kind of mobile with your infantry units. And Smoke is gonna creep this work layer now at the middle, in the left side. Amir007 uh, Gamer, thank you so much for the follow, appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. We have 406 command points available for Sauron, guys, and 450 command points available for Mr. Smoke. Power points wise, uh, one power point ahead. For the Elven player because he was able to creep this troll layer and was able to defend himself against this unit. But it's nothing game changing, game breaking. But losing the builder here is not a good sign for a Smokey. He lost the builder once again and he's gonna lose the mill right after. What a nice attack from Sauron once again guys and I don't know what Smokey is doing. Maybe he's kind of tilted, maybe he's kind of rusty. I don't know but Smokey is making mistakes over mistakes over mistakes. And that's one of them. Definitely one of them. He needs to avoid making. I like the playstyle from Sauron. He's ad adapting to his opponent gameplay really fast and really nicely. He's able to change things which are not working unlike Mr. Smog, who was trying to do the same thing with the dwarves and over and over again. And actually keep failing with that because Sauron was always able to counter that gameplay from his opponent big time. So don't be afraid of changes, Felvin is being used now from uh, Smokey. Follow up, Rallying Call is gonna be used, this, uh, Arches are very very low, but he can't trample them for some reason. Just go for a trample and one shot them, Heal is being used by the way to give them some HP back. But I think it's still a bad fight to take for the Album player. There comes the Wolfpack Battalion, as well as the army of the Spearmen. They can commit potentially against this building, against the statue. They're gonna be also able to take it down, it's gonna be very close. Can he do that? The Strahl Master? I don't think he can, but the following up is gonna be able to finish it off. Still, the Elven player was still able to kill many, many, many units around this side. Look, he keeps still killing and the statue is still alive, I can't believe that. It's gonna be finally taken down now. Uh, T-Band, thank you so much for the follow. Master Beef 305 thank you so much for the follow as well, guys. Thanks for being here and thanks for watching this stream. It means a lot to me. 525 command points available for Engma. 550 now. And on the other side, we have 495 command points available for the Elven player. Losing this one is gonna hurt him. Almost level 2. Go for a trample, dude! Nice one! Just like that. Do that over and over again. There are no pikemen. That's a risky move from Sauron. I don't like it. But I think they got kind of body blocked for some reason. I think these rocks were kind of forcing them to go all the way around. That's why these arches are still alive. 
So nice defense after all, he was also able to keep this level 2 mile on 3 protected while being able to take down one of the starting mills pretty much from his opponent's main shit effects. Not main shit effects, Mr. Smart. <laughs> I was just testing you. RAV123, thank you so much for the follow, appreciate that. Uh, 6 power points collected now for the album player. On the other side, we have 525 command points collected for, you know, Engma. So, command point wise, it's still kind of even. Power point wise, it's the album player slightly ahead, but once again, that's nothing that can decide the outcome of the game yet. Even though the fact that Mr. Smog lost one of his builders, it's gonna hurt him eventually, but he is still in the game. Let me see the transition, level two, level 1, level 1. So no ranges any soon. And in this game also Sauron is not getting many Lancers on the field, unlike in the game in which he was almost able to win. Maybe the reason is because this is a very small map in compared to other maps. That's why you don't really need those mobile units, at least not many of them. That's an overcommitment, maybe he might lose a lot here. He's gonna be able to take it down, these wolf packs are level 1 and these ones are gonna be potentially dying. Yeah, the Malone 3 has been taken down though, that's not bad. It was a level 2 Malone 3 after all. He has still two of them remaining on the field. But that's bringing down the Elven player to the limit of command points. So his command points kept right now. He can't make any more units. That's why he's building an outpost around this side. Which is not bad, because that's gonna block this entire pathway. I mean, there, are, there is still a tiny pathway around this side. But that's still not bad. Because you can always put arches inside, you can put some pikemen in front of the tower, which is gonna make it hard for the Engma player to commit against that one. And I think towers on a map like Eren may edit is actually quite are actually quite effective, you know. Level 2 mil. Oh nice one, rallying call, commitment. Now he has a bunch of lenses on the field. That's a nice felvin here from Smokey. Might be able to kill a lot of these lenses, and Sauron has to be extremely careful. He's forced to retreat. And he was fully committing against this mill, by the way, which is level 2. And nice one here from Smokey. Very well done. That's gonna give him the buff advantage, guys. He has also Snowwind available in the worst case to keep this mill protected. Alright? But I think he needs more than that in order to take down this side of the map. They have leadership, they have the sustain of the well, they have the tower, which is gonna be hard to commit against, and they have also a lot of arches around this side. So the Alvin army is looking great. In those kind of choke points like this, you know, it's gonna be hard for the Engma player to make a great use of more units uh, because the size doesn't matter. If, you know, remember the movie 300? In which they were able to defend against thousands and thousands of people? That's the same situation. It's a tiny pathway, it's hard to commit with all of them at the same time. The mill is going down. Again, Snowbind is available, but I, I hope he's not gonna use it on this level 1 mill. I think it's kind of, you know, you need to kind of save it for important meals like this ones. This level 2 meals, left and right. Smokey was able to creep the last work layer on the map. We have still one creep left and that's the troll layer in the middle of the map, on the left side. But Smokey is playing extremely defensively. And that of, of course gives the chance to the Alvin player to expand very nicely. That's why he has now 755 command points collected. He was going for the arrow volley actually, alright. I don't like this that much. He's gonna use it. Oh, I like this very much. I like this very much. What happens here? What is this massacre? What? Smokey was not on time dodging this attack. Look how many units he just lost. Just like that. One arrow volley. <laughs> Alright, I take it back. Apparently, it's very effective. Because normally, Smokey should be able to dodge this incoming damage. Since the arrow volley is gonna give you this, you know, the... You see the animation. You have time, pretty much, if you react fast enough, you know? But if you don't pay attention, of course, you can run it down. And he lost a lot of this unit. Now is the time for the Elven player to shine. The commitment against this level 2 mill. And he has the Snowbind ability available. He can use it. The Trial Master. Oh! He lost him before he could turn. The dust is coming in, but it's just too late. That's 200 resources lost just like that. And I think this is not looking good for uh, Mr. Smog, guys. He has level 2 Wolf 10 for the Snow Trolls. But that's the best looking game so far with the Elven faction from Sauron against the Engma faction from Mr. Smog for the Elven player at least. 475 command points available against 815. 815! And once again, winning this means Sauron is gonna have a huge advantage. Next game it's gonna be Smog who's gonna be able to choose the faction. 
it means next game we might see the same matchup like in this one, Engma against Elves. But even if Smog wins the next one, but he loses this one, the score is gonna be 4 3, and the fact that they're gonna play it afterwards, Dwarves against Engma, is gonna of course favor uh, Sauron, the Engma slash Elves player. Morgomir is level 2. Baldo is, by the way, level 3 already. Nice attack here. He was able to kill so much in this area. He was getting so much money also from Baldo now. He keeps getting money from killing these units, by the way. Because Baldo is nearby. Haldir is around. And Haldir has to run for his life. He's left alone around this side. Now the commitment against the level 3 mill with the Lancers. There is no Snowbinder available. That means the mill is gonna be taken down. Before the pikeman can, you know, make it out from the uh, Hall of the Kingsmen. And losing a level 3 mill is gonna drop down Mr. Smog to 325 command points only. He's all about to be command points scared. On the other side, the Albion player has almost full command points, 855 in compared to 325. That's more than double. I know this much math, guys. This is crazy how crazy ahead Sauron is right now. Building the second tower. Because he can, he can afford it. Um, Baldur is level almost 4. But look at this, he's expanding and Smokey is kinda, you know, being in a turtle situation. He can only defend himself, he can't really push. He was wasting too much time. And Sauron is none of them. He is not gonna waste time, he's gonna go for the end smooth. He's going for a siege, ladies and gentlemen. And let me tell you that much, I feel like the Engma player, Mr. Smog, isn't ready to defend against his ends right now, okay? Because he has only tier 1 units. And I don't think they can make it to this end. They can, I mean, he can potentially go for some expansions, which can kind of defend his fortress. But these buildings around the fortress are going to be for sure taken down. All it takes is like one more end, and that's going to be also the case. This way you can siege much, much faster. And the Alvin player's command points kept now. That's why he has to make some more Malon trees. Very important here from the Engna player to actually kill those Malon trees 24-7. And kind of make the Alvin player command points capped. This way he can't get more ends on the field. Which is going to slow down the siege. But during all this time the Lancers are committing against the level 3 mill in the backside. And they are also able to take it down. And look Smoky guys. Smoky is down to 450 command points only. He's now forced to invest the money. Little money what he has. Into building a Trollstone Thrower expansion. Which costs him 600 resources. And he can't even afford to build the second one. He has not the money he needs. And he knows going back and trying to defend myself is pointless because I can't. I can't approach this end when they have some, so much protection around this area. I'm gonna try to go for offensive move instead. He's gonna use the white summon against this end. Let's see how effective this is going to be. White are actually... What? Did you guys see that? They burst it down this end in no time. I, did, I didn't expect this one. I gotta be honest with you guys. They touched him and he's dead. That's... Not what I was expecting to be. What? Apparently, the ants are very weak against whites. Okay, okay. Did you guys? This was kind of. Now you see me. Now you don't. Maybe this ant is like a like a magician. I don't know. But he disappeared from my screen in a blink of an eye. You know, like just like that. E50 command points only. I mean, Smokey is so behind, guys. It's kind of hard from this point on. It's gonna be a suffer game for Smokey for sure. He's gonna try his best to win this tournament, of course. There's money on the line. Uh, oh, nice hit, yo! Look how many Lancers he was able to kill because of the help of this Trollstone Thrower. They were knocking down, uh, this one was knocking down these Lancers on the ground and giving so much time for Volzo and also uh, Morgomir to deal damage to them. Smokey is gonna fight until the end. I need to be honest with you, the matchup we have seen before in the same matchup, I think Sauron had a similar lead. But he was not able to finish off this game against Engma player Mr. Smoke, who was patient, who was just trying to win. And he was able to win with like his opponent having 15,000 cash in the bank. So everything is possible. But in this game, I don't see Mr. Smoke getting the Wolf Summon any soon. I don't see him getting the getting the Giant Summon any soon. Because from the White Summon, you can go for the Blight. Blight might be in this situation maybe a little bit better. But you need the Giants definitely if you want to be able to kill the enemy fortress. But he can't even go for the Giants. And he's also 12 power points away from the Blight. Blight cannot be bad though, because maybe Blight can make you win one big fight. And we have seen how effective these Whites are against these Ants. So if you kill the enemy units with the Blight, they're gonna turn into the Whites. You can use them to kill the Ants and commit. And taking down the Ants mode and taking down this area is gonna buy you so much time. There comes the Arrow Volley, by the way, from Sauron one more time to kill some enemy units. 
And once again, look how difficult it is for Mr. Smog to commit against this end with this much leadership. There is no way Engmar can nullify the leadership. They are getting debuffed because of Morgomir, but who is now dead? It means no more damage reduction on these Elven units. And Smokey knows there is no point of playing this anymore. And the score after this game, number 6, is going to be 4-2 for Sauron, ladies and gentlemen. The game can be over, the series can be over, the finals can be over if Sauron, the Elven player at the bottom side, wins this one. And in order to deny that from happening, the orange Engma player, Mr. Smog, has to not only win this one, he has to win from now on every single game until he has 5 wins. Which is easier said than done. Two mills coming up for the Engma player, Mr. Smug. Two Malone trees are coming up for the Elven player. Which makes sense on a map like this. Because in this map you don't need to go for the early barracks. It's a big map, expanding, getting some money I think is the right way. He's gonna build the barracks right after. And now, let's see now this matchup. On a map like Jungles of Fararad, in which macro is going to be very important. Expanding offensively, trying to kill enemy mills slash Malon trees is the key to victory in this matchup, in this map. Okay. Uh, Rallying Call is gonna be chosen from Sauron, 100%. And Vorchan has been already picked up from the spellbook by Mr. Smog, the Engma player, who was losing the last game with this faction against the Alvin player Sauron on the map Aaron Laird. But a fantastic performance from Sauron as well. He was playing patient, slow, doesn't rush for, a, for no reason. Very, you know, smart, doesn't lose too many units, and was this way able to build up his lead to victory. And all it takes is him doing that one more time to win this tournament. Pikeman start, um, he might go for the creep, and yeah, that's I think that's gonna be also the case because he's already setting the waypoint, as you can see. Um, Baljit Elvedin, thank you so much for the follow, appreciate that. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Now you are able to use this emote. <laughs> Answer. Okay. Alright, he's gonna creep. I mean, they are doing pretty much the same thing. Even though Smokey is creeping a little bit more offensively, while the Elven player is creeping the work layer at the bottom side. Smokey. Oh, he's cancelling the creep for some reason. Maybe he was kind of double clicking on both of them at the same time. And he was just losing a lot of time because of that reason. But it's fine. I mean, this creep is gonna not be contested any soon. He's gonna be fine afterwards. And now the Wolf Den is coming up, like in every single game, in every single matchup. Extra over snacks for defense. And again, once again, Sauron is playing it slow. He's playing it patient. Going now for the Barracks number two. Because you need to get a lot of units on the field in this matchup. In a map like Jungles of Farharad, especially. And checking the side lanes is the key to victory. Expanding. Killing the enemy meals, I think Sauron is really doing a nice job in this one, macro-wise, in this series so far. Okay, and he's also gonna go for the troll creep at the bottom left side by using the builder for the lure of the troll. Easy peasy, getting some more money, but in the meantime, Smokey is going for the attack, guys. And so far, there is only one archer battalion for defense. The pikemen are not gonna be in the position as they are about to creep this troll at the bottom left side. There is one more archer around this side, they need to react now, but the statue is gonna get cancelled. The builder should be fine, he can always build the wall up in the worst case. Oh, 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 alright, alright, he was baiting, he was baiting. Look how much time he was able to buy. Because if you re reorder the attack, they have to, I mean, the units in BFME are not the smartest units in the universe, you know? They're gonna just wait, waste time re-coordinate re the attack in order to attack the builder and that's why he was waiting with the builder and not rushing the wall up immediately but this Malone tree in the bottom side is gonna be taken down putting all this time smoke is untied so it's not bad but the thing is uh, the Alvin player was able to creep this he was leaving one part of the treasure on the ground which is not the best this wolf riders are gonna be able to get away the good thing here for the Alvin player is no actually not he was using rallying call defensively all right all right not bad, I mean Smog was able to deal decent amount of damage, but he also lost many many units. The thing is, now he has he get, needs to be ready for defense. He has to now get some more units on the field, that's why he's now building up also the second Hall of the Kingsman. 460 for Elves and 450 for Engma. So in terms of command points, Chad, it's pretty even. It's pretty even. 
All right, leadership. Nice positioning here with the statue. I like it. That's gonna protect this pathway entirely. And sporty with additional damage and armor, which is always nice. Uh, sorcerers, I, I, I know, I saw you guys talking about sorcerers. I feel like they are very vulnerable, though. They are very squishy. And, uh, you know, since. Oh, nice money here from Smokey. He was like, thank you very much for leaving the money on the ground. And I think against elves, they're gonna die very fast. You know what I'm saying? Like. All it takes is a couple of attacks from the archers, and they are gonna be dead. The sorcerers. And they are. They cost so much money. And also a lot of time. You need to be you need to build the Temple of Twilight. You need to get this to level 2, level 3 eventually. And then you need to recruit them. They lose a lot of members of the battalion if they cast something. And if you target them, they're gonna die in a second. I did this the first hero of the game number seven from Sauron, the album player. Oh look at this guys. Look at this positioning. I like this. He's camping here. The reason why he's camping is because the Elven passive is allowing him to get stealthed. So his units are invisible to the enemy units until they are really close to them. Which is very nice for Elven gameplay. You need to make sure to actually use this in your favor, you know? You can also put the arches, for, uh, for example, around this side. This way they can shoot from a very long range. And also the enemy units, they need to move all the way around to actually be able to target them in medium range, you know? Which is really good for Elves. High ground advantage. And look at this now. He's not able to see them. Mr. Smoke doesn't see them, by the way, yet. Until he gets really, really close. And if you don't pay attention, you might run into the pikeman and you might die. Okay, commitment now. You have leadership. Smokey now realizes, okay, there are some archers. I need to be careful. He doesn't want to take a fight in a choke point like this. Because look at the positioning of these archers. They are hugging the wall. So getting around them is not going to be possible. Very nice positioning here from Sauron. I like that. I mean, you might say this is campy, but I mean, this is smart. That's a cash prize tournament. He needs to win. He wants to win. Uh, Cars and Jojo, thank you so much for the follow. When we draw swords together. And also Los Valor, thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate that. It means a lot. Alright, Smokey's gonna creep now the work layer at the top side. You have my sword. Uh, call, me G9, uh, call me J9, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome to the stream, guys. Means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, 610 command points for Sauron, 575 for Engma. And he needs to expand now. He has to get some snow trolls. He has to get some dark rangers on the field very, 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 very fast. And uh, rest level. Thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate that. Okay. Stable level 1. Still, right? Stable level 1. And uh, so far, he. Oh, never mind. It's a level 2 stable. Okay, my bad. Haldir is also on the fields now, almost level 2. Level 5 is gonna be a huge power spike for Haldir. Leadership against Engmar feels always nice. Because, you know, they potentially never gonna be able to negate your leadership in this game. Until Witch King comes or until Sorcerers come. Okay, that's a commitment now. It might be a bad commitment. He's gonna, he has to kill this first if he wants to be able to win this fight. This is giving so much leadership and damage stats and armor stats. Look how many units he's losing in seconds. It's a really bad commitment for Mr. Smog. That's, did you also use Rallying Call? Yes, he did. They have now double buff, guys. That's why they are dominating this fight. Now, the Alvin player is going for a counter attack with Pikemen, Archers, Hydra, and Lancers. During all this time, he's also getting attacked, but he has statues everywhere, always getting the support from the additional damage and armor leadership. Always nice. And Smog is going to be forced to retreat. He can't win this fight around this area. Now, he has to defend himself, which is easier said than done. Because he has nothing to defend. He has nothing to defend himself. That means at least it's bare minimum one of the smells is going down. I think he might also lose the smell level too in the front side. He has not the power points. I mean, he has the power points he needs for the snowbind. But ideally, you want to go for the failwind. He has 725 command points collected because he was expanding, but still. You know, they have also 735 command points collected for the album player. Command point wise, it's not a big deal. But the thing is... That he has not enough units on the field because he keeps losing units all the time. And this lenses, they're gonna be now able to kill multiple mills for free since Mr. Smog has little to zero protection. And once again, a quick reminder because Smoky is already behind 4 2 in the series. And this is best of 9. That means winning this game means Smoky is gonna be defeated entirely from the grand finals. And Sauron, for the first time, actually. Gonna win a tournament. 
Sauron was always doing a nice job in the tournament so far. He was going really far, quarterfinals, semifinals, but yet he was not able to win a tournament just yet. And that's gonna be the first time, if Sauron wins this, that he will be the winner of one tournament, which is quite nice. Very good. And he's doing a nice job. I mean, he's playing just better, you know, that is how it is. He's just playing better, guys. Alvin Wood offensively, I like that. I like that. That means leadership, I mean, uh, I mean, the buff of Rallying Call is active now on this area permanently. The commitment against the level 2 Wolf then might force him to go for the Snowbind. If he doesn't go for the Snowbind, it's going down. He is not going for it. And the wolf tan level 2 is down. That means no more wolf packs, no more wolf riders, and no more snow trolls any soon for the Engma player, Mr. Smog. And now he can just camp there. Just camp it out. He has only one pike man, though. Anduril, the flame of the west. Uh, and I thank you, because of you I can play this amazing game again. You're welcome. I'm actually happy to get to see more players playing with me games. I'm happy. That's, you know, everything benefits from that one. I hope you're gonna invest some time into the game, become a better player, and also hopefully participate in the upcoming tournament. That's a dream. You know, we're gonna have, hopefully, the World Championship 2021 coming up very, very soon. And it would be amazing if we get, like, around 64 players. Everyone, every single one of you guys is more than welcome to participate. And the more players, the more fun it is, you know. Avoldo is, by the way, level 1 still. Smokey is really behind, has barely any units around. And Sauron is shining bright like a diamond in this one. He's just shining bright like a diamond. As he's, you know, they are saying that Sauron is the best BFME 2 player. And it makes sense. Because being a BFME 2 player and adapting so nicely in the Rise of the Witch King with an Engma faction, with a faction which does not exist in BFME 2 is quite impressive. And he's playing both the games still actively. It's not like he was switching to Rise of the Witch King exclusively, he's still playing BFME 2 at a very high skill level. And I'm impressed. Very well done from Sauron in this tournament, regardless if he wins that or loses that. Diamonds reflect. <laughs> nice to hear. I have some, for example, Discord. Yeah, of course. We have a Discord community with over 1,500 members. All you have to do in the chat is type exclamation mark uh, Discord. And we are good to go. Will you spectate all the games in the World Championship? I don't know. Depends, of course. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna definitely cast and commentate the most important games. I think quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. But there might be some games in the group stage. I won't be around to do that, but we're gonna potentially do it like in the last year, in which Velenorian, for example, can join the stream team. We might have multiple streamers, we can commentate and cast, so we have always some action that's gonna increase the activity in the game, not only game-wise, but also gonna give content to the content creators of Rise of the Witch King, which is always nice. So everyone has something to do. I like that. Orc Summon? Nah, I don't like that one. I don't like that one. And again, the Orc Summon is just not reliable enough against Lancers, you know. The Lancers are such a great counter to that. Of course. Of course we can. He's going for the end mood now. Sauron wants to win this game as soon as possible. He doesn't want to waste time. And take a look into the minimap, guys. We have right now full, almost full command points for Sauron, which is impressive. In the game number 7, he has a level 3 forge. He's gonna go for the Silvertown Arrows. He has so much money. On the other side, Smoky down to 350 command points only. This is domination. This shouldn't be allowed. Don't let your kids watch it. Don't let this see. Don't let the uh, Mr. Smog's family watch this. It's a massive Elven army, guys. He's waiting now for the ends. He's gonna go for Tribute at first. This is the favorite hero from my man, Traki. He likes him the most. <laughs> okay. 
Level 5 had it also for the lead, for the leadership. I, I, you know, it's just over now at this point, right? I mean, if Smog can turn this around, then, you know, everything is possible. Then Corona is going to be over tomorrow, instantly, for the entire world. Abiot into the end, uh, and that's all it takes. It's going to start the siege now. As Smoky doesn't even have the power points he needs for the Snowbind. That means the defeat can't even be denied. It can't even be delayed. Might get the power points though, he will still use it. You know, this is the beautiful part about the finals. Everyone is fighting until the very end. Um, normally, I would say Smoky would call this game GG now a long time ago, if this would be a normal game and not a tournament game. Uh, Angry Kefir 510, thank you so much for the follow. What is the next tournament? I don't know, we will see. I mean, ideally BFME 2, I think BFME 2 would be also nice with the new patch to see a tournament uh, for Battle for Middle Earth 2 games. Because we have now done many many Rise of the Witch King tournaments in a row. We had the Christmas tournament a couple of weeks ago. Now we have to go against Evil tournament, it's nice when we see something different. Debut Siege, the second one is also on the field now. Smokey has the power points he needs. What is Smokey going actually for? Look his money. <laughs> oh, he's going for the Witch King. Guys, Witch King of Engma is on his way, ladies and gentlemen. Witch King, zero manners. He's saying choo choo. Dumpty has the, the trash talk is real. Sauron is trash talking his opponent. And yeah, even though there is not a rule against that one, but I feel like this is more like a, like a poke thing, you know, I don't take it too serious. Uh, Witch King is on his way though. Witch King is on his way. Can Witch King turn this game around? And he knows he can't. The game is over. 